All right. We will let this load. It says we are live, my friends. I'm here with my 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 very good friend from Moscow, Eddie, uh, also known as the Moscow photographer. Before we uh, engage this conversation with everybody else, let's do a sound check and a video check. Uh, you already know. Please let us know if you can hear us. Eddie, can you speak? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm so uh, glad and uh, happy to be here on Daniel uh, Wild Siberia live on this Saturday evening because it's Saturday evening here in Moscow. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, Saturday evening, about 6 p.m. And it's cold <laughs> for you guys in the West. It's about uh, 29 degrees Fahrenheit, about minus one or minus two uh, for those of us awesome. who uh, are already used to that. So I hopefully see. everybody can hear us. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's loud and clear. Well, today, as you can see from the title, we will be talking about uh, marrying or getting married in Russia. Now, I haven't done it myself, but I will be marrying Senya hopefully this year. Um, my friend Eddie has already gone through the process, and I thought, you know what? Why not uh, feed the knowledge to those people who may want to get married or want to know how it is to get married in Russia? So he's here today um, to give us all the information that, that he has and to answer some of the questions that you guys may have. We're also going to be having Senya on a little bit later. But before that, please, could you please introduce yourself, how you ended up in Russia? Nothing about the marriage yet. Just let us know how you fell in, uh, how you ended up in Russia. Sure, absolutely. So uh, back in 2017, I was living in Texas. I'm born and raised in Texas. I'm Mexican-American. I uh, was working in law enforcement uh, where I've worked for uh, almost 30 years. And um, about that time, I was on Facebook and I was in a Facebook group with thousands of people all over the world. Uh, it was not a, a dating site, as some people <laughs> will uh, ask me. Uh, it had to do with uh, spirituality and uh, new people would come on and introduce themselves to the group. And all of a sudden, this name that I couldn't even pronounce came up and uh, welcomed themselves to the group. And I was just, I felt something. Fast forward, uh, I wanted to talk to this person. I'd never felt this before. Felt there was some sort of a connection. Uh, make a long story short, there was a connection, absolutely. And uh, once we started talking, we, we talked every day. So uh, fast forward one year to 2018, August 2018, and I had decided that I wanted to meet this wonderful lady in person, and which meant that I had to travel to Moscow. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would travel to, to Moscow, Russia. But I'm a sense of a, I have a sense of adventure. I am an adventurer at heart. And I said, why not? What do I have to lose? Came to Moscow, met this wonderful lady, fell in love, and not only fell in love with the girl, I fell in love with the city. I fell in love with Russia. I fell in love with the culture, even the language that's difficult to speak. <laughs> it was kind of music to my ears, you know, I wanted to understand it. And, you know, being in, in Moscow, going to Red Square, seeing St. Basil, seeing the Kremlin up close, these are, you know, I grew up, in the 70s, so this is Cold War back in America. And I would only see these pictures, you know, on television, on the nightly news, when they would talk about Moscow as being a very scary place, you know, it's behind the Iron Curtain and these people are our enemy. And for me to be standing there uh, was just an incredible uh, awakening for me because I realized that, you know, these Russians aren't our enemy. <laughs> Uh, they're far from it, far from it. And uh, they're just like you and me. Yeah. In fact, we're all the same. I had, I was wondering, so before you traveled to Russia uh, and before you were in this chat, did Russia ever cross through your mind? Can you tell me like what, I know, I know the Cold War oh. era stuff, but like what was yeah. the, what were your thoughts about Russia? Because personally for me, there was nothing. It was like, it was irrelevant in my life. There was nothing going on in my brain about Russia. And when the when the trip finally happened, it became everything to me. But before that, it was nothing. 
Well, it was quite similar to that because that's a very interesting word that you used, irrelevant. And I mean, you never thought about it. Are you your day-to-day -day life, Russia? You never even think about it. And so when it came to the point, I started to think that, hey, I might have to travel to Russia to meet this person. I started my investigation. Let's find out what Russia is all about. So Google's your best friend. Uh, found some YouTube videos and started to learn a little bit about the language, about the culture, the visa process, but just that paperwork, just to be able to come into uh, the country. This is where my knowledge and my education about Russia started. But I had never thought that I would ever go to Russia. It was one of those things that as a kid, you would see like uh, St. Basil's on television or, or the military parades on, on uh, May holidays and just think and say, I wonder what it would be like to be there. But never did I think that I would actually want to go there or ever be there. So it was irrelevant, as you said. Daniel, so, I lost your audio. Like I mentioned, my friends, today we're going to be talking about the marriage process. Um, let's start off with the, uh, how did you ask her to marry you? Like, uh, what is the culture like, you know, in, in America? Some people ask the parents, how did you court her? How did you get to that point where she said yes? I think that's very important. And I didn't mention that I would talk about this, but I would really like to know. So I did travel to Russia in August of 2018, and we met. I was here for about two weeks. And since then, I made several trips. I came back in uh, early January the following year, 2019, again in August of 2019 for about another 10, 12 days. And in uh, October of 2019, I retired from my job. So this freed up everything. And I had already decided that I wanted to ask her to marry. So uh, purchased a ring, you know, did, did the whole uh, 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 groom-to-be routine. And I flew to Moscow. And in January of 2020, on New Year's Eve, actually at New Year's, uh, it was my gift to uh, Elena and uh, it was a proposal and uh, with a ring and uh, she said yes and we began to make plans and my plan in january of 2020 this is key keep this this date in your mind january 2020 was going to come back in may 2020 to start the process of moving getting married all that good stuff what happened in march of 2020 anybody remember the <laughs> I don't know oh the covid yeah <laughs> covid golly yeah that's true so covid shut down everything and uh shut down travel just made things very very difficult so for a whole year and a half i couldn't travel to russia so that pushed everything back uh we made several trips to istanbul turkey uh because this was a place that both of us could actually get to without too much difficulty so Istanbul became our friend. Uh, I love that city. It, it's probably my second favorite city behind Moscow. And uh, I finally got everything together to move uh, in May of 2023. That was this past uh, year. It'll be a year next month. Yep. And got here. First thing we did is we went to Zags. Now, Zags is a... Uh, uh, it's an acronym in Russian, and I can't even pronounce it, but if you say it in English, it's ZAGS. And it's the Civil Registration Authority for Marriages. So it's a government office because all marriages in Russia are civil. There's no such thing as a religious wedding like you would have in the United States that's recognized by the state. So we went to ZAGS. We had all our documents. We thought we did. And they're looking at everything and they say, okay, everything looks like it's in order. And they said, where's your document that says that you're not currently married? And I was like, well, I was married before, but I'm divorced and there's my divorce decree. And they said, no, 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 we understand you were married before and you're now divorced, but we need a document that says 
you're not currently married. I was, what? <laughs> I didn't even know such a document existed. And it does exist. And many countries, uh, not just Russia, even the United States requires this document. If you're marrying a United States citizen and you're a foreigner, you're required to produce this similar document as well. So this meant that I had to travel back to Texas to get this document because there's no way that you could do it electronically because my I have to sign this document in front of a notary. So it's, it's an official document. Then I have to have it apostille by the state of Texas that says it's an official document. It's a bureaucratic nightmare. And of course, flights are expensive, uh, especially now post sanctions. Um, and I had to wait. So I waited till December of this past year, flew down to Texas, visited family for the holidays. And one of the things I did was get all the documents I needed, not only for marriage, but to apply for residency right after that, because there are yeah. certain documents you need for residency that I would have to get back in the United States as well. Might as well just do everything at once. Well, that's what I did. Well, look, guys, we're going to get into the story. We're going to start breaking it down for you. Eddie, um, can you give us a list of the, I, I guess you said you had the, if you were married, you need a divorce certificate, a certificate showing that you were divorced, but can you uh, go down the I'll, line and name them? I will break it down for you. So first document you need is your passport. So your original passport. When you enter Russia, you're given a migration card by uh, immigration. When you go to passport control, you need that form as well. As a foreigner, you're required to register your address of where you're residing in Russia. So you need your registration. So those three documents right off the bat, uh, passport, uh, immigration card, and registration. Now, you just can't go and present these documents because your passport is in English. It has to be translated into Russian first. So you have to go to a notary. This is a uh, person uh, who can operate legally to translate your document from English into Russian, and then they certify it as a legal document. So you go to a notary and you have your passport notarized. So, and in fact, it looks something similar to this. And so I've got a copy of the passport on the front page and then the actual, there's the copy there. This is the actual translation here. And it's got an official seal. And I recommend if you're a foreigner here in Russia, that you have two or three of these copies laying around because you're going to need them for various bureaucratic uh, things here in Russia. So have multiple copies of your passport translated into English. So those are the base documents. Now, you do need a document, whether you've been married before or not, you need a document that says you're not currently married in your uh, original jurisdiction. So this means where you have your permanent residence. For me, it was in the state of Texas, so I needed a document from Texas. Uh, now, because I had been married before, I also had to, to provide a, a copy, a, an, a certified copy, of my divorce decree. Now, this divorce decree also has to be translated into Russian, certified, and presented. So a whole bunch of documents. Um, it, it was a stack about this thick, and uh, they ch the, the notary charges by character, <laughs> not by page, but by character that they translate from English into Russian. And so based on the number of documents and, and how big they are, and you know, I had a big old divorce decree about this thick, uh, I paid about $165 uh, in total just to 
uh, get my documents translated into Russian. Let me see. the On the screen here, maybe you guys can see, but it says application for the letter of no record proof of single status. Um, this is the one that Eddie's talking about. Uh, obviously, every county, maybe every state, maybe every country, if you have them, will look different. Uh, this one will be, this one's from Santa Clara. I think this is California. But for the most part, uh, you're going to need this because they need to know that you're not going uh, to Russia as a married man. Say that uh, I was married here in Mexico. There's no way uh, Russia is going to let me marry one of their citizens if I'm married in Mexico. So this is obviously a very important piece of paper. And like Eddie said, everything must be translated. Why? Because you're obviously in a country where English or whatever your language is, unless it's Russian, is not the dominant language. And for the bureaucracy to have and get theirs, they need it in Russian. Uh, it was the same here in Mexico when we needed uh, when we needed a when we wanted to get married, Senia and I, we needed everything translated into Spanish because Spanish is the language of the land here. Now, can you tell us a little bit about when you're going through the paperwork, uh, where you stress when you have to get it, uh, like, you know how people are, are nervous about, I'm nervous about when I go to certain offices and I have to deal with the Russian people, uh, you can get a little bit nervous and a little bit overwhelmed. How was your experience gathering all the paperwork? Was it, uh, easy? Was it, uh, just normal. Well, I, you know, we were confident when we went to Zags the first time. This is in June of 2023 because we thought we had everything. We had done our homework. We had researched the law and, and we did read where it said that you needed proof that you were not currently married, but it didn't list exactly how to prove this. Yeah. So we assumed, I assumed, and we know what that means, that the uh, divorce decree would suffice for that. No, there is a separate document for that. So we, we learned the hard way. And um, so when I went back to Texas, okay, I, I went back, I think for 18 days, and I had a lot of things to do in 18 days. And one of those things was to get this form notarized and get it apostille uh, as well. So this meant going to a notary and getting it signed and signing the notary. And that was, that was easy. The hard, the more difficult part was I had to travel from where I was living to the state capital in Austin, which is a five hour drive to walk into the, the secretary of state's office to have this document apostille. Now you can say, well, can't you send it in by mail? I can three week turnaround minimum. <laughs> but if you go in person, it's one, yeah, I mean, you're in and out in like 15 minutes. It's that quick. So, so what, you, what you're saying is go. basically, yeah. Uh, guys, if, if you are in a relationship with somebody in Russia, the best thing for you to do is bring even the kitchen sink when it comes <laughs> to paperwork, because Agreed. these people will, they will ask you for absolutely everything under the sun if it's necessary. And for them, a lot of things are necessary. This is not like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's not a simple process when it involves paperwork in Russia. It's always going to be like a, a so many steps to get it. In my opinion, in my personal experience, it's been like that. And the reason why it's like that, I guess it's because of their culture, because without a piece of paper, you're a bug. They have even a saying for this kind of stuff. So always have your paperwork ready. Bring extra copies, like Eddie said, because you might need a one for here, one for there. Um, personally, uh, I will bring maybe five copies of everything that I have. And especially if not in black and white, if I can have color, some of the best copies so that thing, they could be happy. Now, guys, if you don't know, today I'm doing a live with my friend, a Moscow photographer, Eddie, a good friend who I met in Moscow personally at the, this was, what, what month was it? I think it was uh, October, wasn't it? It was October. October. Yeah, yeah Susha is here next to me, by the way. She's going to be joining us soon. But he has his own channel. Uh, we, we, we will pop it up later. But if you want to know, here's his uh, information. Moscow photographer. He's almost at 4,000 subscribers. Guys, he's creating content 
from the capital of Russia, a place that is going through a lot right now. You know, Russia as a whole is going through a lot. A lot of people are, who are watching my videos want to know more about Russia. I'm currently not in Russia. My good friend is in Russia. So this is an opportunity for you to subscribe to his channel. I'm going to pin his channel in the comment section so you can do us both a favor and come check out his videos because they're very, very uh, informative. A lot of things that I've never covered, he's already covering. And, you know, if you want to learn new things about Russia, the best thing to do it, if you don't speak Russian, is through an English speaker. Here it is. I'm going to pin his information on the chat, and you can go ahead and subscribe. Again, it is really cool to have my friend on here. As Thank a you so much, creator. Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I do appreciate uh, all the support that we can get. Uh, we produce content to show a different kind of Russia, a Russia that you have probably, as a foreigner, not been told about, not been experienced. Uh, I don't tend to really get into politics, but sometimes politics comes in and we just do. But I usually talk about lifestyle and what it's like as a foreigner living in this wonderful country. So please come over to the channel, subscribe, and uh, and welcome to the family. Thank you so much. With that being said, uh, Ksusha, are you ready? We have uh, a special guest today. A lot of you guys have followed this channel uh, and know that I'm getting married. Let me see if I can. Can you bring me uh, those black ones there in the front, please? So I could clean this. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you my fiance, Ksenia. Uh, she's also the black things right there. Yeah, those right there. Grab that. Grab it. Grab it. Just grab it. Just, just grab it. Oh, it's so weird. Can you please just grab that, please? Can you please grab it? How many times do I have to tell you to grab it? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So we, you can sit down now. And we're going to introduce Xenia here. Are you ready? <laughs> we're having a problem. Uh, so you want to say hello? How have you been and stuff like that? Hi, everyone. I'm still in Mexico. It's hot. <laughs> I know it's back. It's hot. What? You can hear me? I'm trying to see if how the sound why the sound is like. Wait, let me see talk now. Hi, everyone again. Can you guys hear her? Uh, she's muted. Okay, let's see. Put this one on. Take that one off. Okay, speak now. Okay. How you can hear me now? Very good. All right. Well, as you guys know, uh, Ksenia and I have been together now like more than two years. Yeah. Yeah. Almost, yeah. A little bit, uh, maybe going on to two years. And like Eddie, uh, I not only fell in love with her, but I fell in love with the Russian culture and with the Russian people, with the Russian feeling. And um, what did you like about me? Because a lot of foreigners, they come and they talk about, oh, I like this Russian girl or I like this Russian guy. But uh, very, very little do we hear about the other halves. Uh, because I guess as foreigners, we, we talk more or we do content. But what, what do you like about me as a foreigner or as a man? I like only uh, you like a man, your personality, uh, what person you are. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people also want to know what do you what do your father think about me? Look, in Russian culture, if you're coming as a man, this is very important. If you're coming as a man and you're thinking about marrying a Russian woman, doesn't matter what her age is, if if it's middle age, late age, if their parents are alive, especially their father, you're gonna want to be a man. And by that I mean I made a video about what a man is in Russia and what a man is in the United States. What is your father? What are the kind of things that me and your father do? uh in russia first my father love you <laughs> he love fishing with you and for some reason they all the time find a way to talk with each other without translate uh, my father don't know english he don't know russian and they communicate so good 
I don't know how. I uh, even I don't need be around them, and they can go together alone fishing at night. Doesn't matter. It's I don't know how to explain it, but it's really good. Yeah, I not expected honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, what what are some things that you think are different about me and 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 your father, like Russian and and American? Because again, this is about getting married, and if I plan on marrying Xenia, I obviously have to assimilate at least a little bit. Uh, before you answer the question, Eddie, can you tell us some things that you've changed now that you're married to a Russian? Maybe some things that you've learned, some assimilation that's been going on. You know. Um... One of the things that uh, that I read about, this was before I first came to Russia in 2018, was that chivalry is alive and well here in Russia. If you're a man, you're expected to be a man. You open a door for a lady. If you're in the metro and uh, an older woman or somebody or a woman with a family and children, you give up your seat to them. And uh, it's 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 expected. You know, it's not that uh, they give you the okay to do it. No, no, no. It's expected. And so uh, when I realized that having lived in America for 50 some odd years and gone through feminism and, and that type of, uh, you know, liberal background where you actually had to ask permission of a woman if you could help her with her bags. Here in Russia, you don't ask. You just do it. And they appreciate that because you're a man and you're expected to be a man. And so when I realized that I had full permission to be as masculine as I am, as masculine as I want to be or need to be, uh, it felt so, so good. And uh, I, I, that's one of the things I love about being in Russia. I can be a man and uh, don't have to worry about somebody uh, calling me a you know toxic masculinity or anything like that, you know, just be who you are. You're muted, Daniel. I've had similar experience with her where uh, if she's carrying something, like I have to be on the ball. I need to take that bag. I need to do this. I need to do that. Right, Xenia? Like Yes, uh, but for me, uh, I can answer the, your question. Like my father, the same. And uh, when you do this stuff, uh, I feel like uh, I don't see difference uh, between you and my father. It's the same. Mm. Uh, you both strong men, and I like it. That's why I don't <laughs> see any difference. <laughs> yeah. And going back to the fishing guys, by the way, if you just happen to end up with a Siberian girl and you don't know how to fish and you don't know how to be outside, you're going to have a bad time. And I'm just, I'm not trying to be stereotypical here, but in Siberia, if you don't know how to fish and you don't know how to be outside, you're really going to be embarrassed. Get ready to have a lot of older guys or like your girlfriend's dad and his friends laugh at you or play tricks on you. Because if you can't carry your own out there in the wilderness, it's going to be a bad time. I always remember uh, going fishing for the first time and wanting to catch my first fish so I could show to her father, like, look, look I, I can do it. Because I remember the first time we ever went fishing, her father just cast it and brought in a pike. And I was mind blown. I was like, you can just take food from the water? <laughs> and it took me how many months? Maybe three months, two months? Uh, yeah, two or three months. It took me about two or three months to catch a fish. and But after that, they started rolling in. So that was my way of assimilating with her father was doing the type of things that he liked and you know in russia it feels like everything just brings you in it's so natural uh you see the people you see the people how they act and it to me it just seems like such a good match me being a mexican-american eddie as well i feel that our mexican side fits in so good with the russians what, what could you say about agreed. that agreed in fact, uh, one of the things that I remember growing up as a child was when my parents would go visit somebody somebody else, a friend or, or family, and my mother would always have either bake something or we would stop at a bakery and take something because you always arrived with a gift. 
And when we left, the host of that uh, party or, or that meeting would make sure to give us something. It was either some food or maybe some uh, flowers or plants from the yard, something. You left with something. And as I grew into adulthood, you know, had my own family, these traditions just didn't really happen in America. And when I came to Russia, it was like, <laughs> really, you guys still do this? And it's like, what do you mean still do this? This is, this is the way we do things. And it reminded me of my, of my childhood and, and growing up in, in a, in a Mexican-American family and that Mexican culture that is the same way. And it just felt like home, you know, it, it's like, like home. Yeah, definitely. Xenia has been here in Mexico for about a month. Uh, can you tell Xenia what type of things that you've noticed here that are a little bit similar to Russia? Like Eddie was saying, he saw some things that were similar. Do you see any things that are similar? But for me, I feel like home here. <laughs> I'm not staying here. I want to go back home to Sudanka. <laughs> but why? Why do you feel at home? I don't know. People really nice, uh, good food. And I don't know. Even I uh, impressed how people really nice on the road. Because in uh, my region, people little mean on the road. <laughs> but here, people more nice on the road. I don't know, everyone say hi, like all time in Russia. Like if you go on the street, for me, it's uh, so unusual when you see people who you don't know and they say, what is this, what is this? And you're like, oh, in Russia, in all time, it was the same, but now it's not like that. And I miss about this time. And uh, for me, it's uh, Still a little difficult say for people who I don't know Buenos Dias or Buenos Tardes, <laughs> but I try to learn. Yeah, she what well, she's basically describing, by the way, friends, since she's uh my age, she's she's like let's just say she's Soviet. Um, she grew up in a Russia that's a little bit different than today. Uh I guess it's more westernized where people don't say, I mean, I'm not even gonna say that because actually I remember. Growing up, we also said good morning, good afternoon, hello, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, to strangers. America is a little bit changed. Russia's done the same. But in Mexico, you still have to say good morning, good afternoon, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. It's still alive and well. And that's what she's talking about, that culture that reminds her of the old Russia. Now, I want to talk about, Eddie, tell us exactly, let's go back to the story. Um, you've, you've got the paperwork, and I think it's really cool that you went through the whole shebang already because i'm going to go through it guys if you're just joining this live stream eddie's my good friend the moscow photographer he has this channel subscribe to it it's pinned in this chat on youtube but the reason why he's here is because he's telling us and he's explaining to us the process of being a foreigner and getting married in russia i myself will go through the process he's already talked about the paperwork that he needed and now he's going to tell us how do you choose the date to get married and what is the whole uh, marriage like? What is a wedding like? So once I returned back from Texas and we had all our uh, paperwork and as soon as the January New Year holidays were over, we went to Zags and we had all our fingers crossed and we put all the documents down. And this young man uh, was the uh, I guess the, the, the clerk that was looking at all our paperwork and he was just so silent, you know, and he's got that, that non-emotional Russian look that we all know, you know, and you can't read them. You know, you, you can't read these Russians, man. You don't know it's like, and he's just going through all the paperwork. And then at the end, he just says, okay, uh, everything looks good. Everything is in order. Uh, you can choose your date. It has to be from this date forward. So you once your paperwork is accepted and you're given the go-ahead that, yes, you can legally marry, you have to wait at least 32 days, 32 calendar days before you can schedule your wedding. Why it's 32 days? I, I have no idea, but that's the way it is. So you simply look at the calendar and you can schedule it up to one year in advance, but at least 32 days from the day you, you go to Zags. 
So we looked at the calendar and we chose uh, February 17th, which was a convenient day and one of the earliest convenient days for us. And uh, we just did it. Uh, so when they tell you to choose a date and this guy's, this is what I'm talking about, like bureaucracy and stuff. This is literally you choosing a date for your wedding with the government and they write it down on a calendar or is this how it works? <laughs> it, 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 it's more specific than that because not only do you pick your date, you pick the hour. You can get married seven days a week. Okay. It's, it doesn't have to be on a Saturday. It doesn't have to be on a Friday. It can be Monday at 1045 a.m. So uh, we chose a Saturday that was available and there was time slots. There was one at like 1030 in the morning and one at 230 and three o'clock, something like that. And so we just chose the morning hour. But that's literally how you can do it. You can even get married on Sunday. So uh, very interesting process. Did they tell you what the latest, uh, like guys, uh, did, did was there like a from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m.? What what is the times? Did they give you like time restrictions? The pro the the entire ceremony takes about 15 minutes. Okay, it's just yeah. 15 minutes. It's short. It's it's very to the point. And um, so they scheduled us from like, I think our. our Ceremony was at 1045 and they told us to be there at 1030. So we showed up at 1030. And of course, there's other people getting married, other couples. And so sometimes they run a little bit late. So we went into the ceremony room about uh, 11 and by 1115, we were out. What, what was like the it was obviously in Russian, right? So what was it like to hear? Do, do, do they do the whole thing? Like, do you take this woman as I've never been married? I don't even know what they say in America, but do they ask the question? Yes or no? So when uh, in fact, I have a picture here and let me just uh, put this picture right. up. Just one. Moment. Oh, that's beautiful. So you walk into the ceremony ceremony room and right in front of you is your uh, marriage certificate. And there's an officiant, uh, a female. And as I understand it, it's always a female. Uh, don't quote me on that. If you know something different, write it down in the comments. But uh, we sit down at the table. They put the application before you. And in Russian, they basically turn to me and say, uh, you do want to get married. Yes, yes. They look at the uh, woman and say, you do want to get married. Yes. OK, there's the pen. <laughs> sign, sign the document. So you sign the document, your wife signs the document and that's it guys. You're done. You're married. What, what is the celebration? Like, are you able to bring family guys? If you're just joining us, this is my friend again, the Moscow photographer, Eddie, and he's letting us know what a ceremony in Moscow, I'm sorry, in Russia is like to get married. Uh, and I'm here just to ask him a thousand questions because if you don't know, I'm marrying Susha. She's down below there, uh, below him. I'm going to be trying to get married in Russia this year. Uh, what, what was the ceremony like? Is there people? Are you allowed to bring guests? Can you bring, like, I as a Mexican, if I brought half my family, it would fill up the whole town. But like, what is the what is the requirement? I mean, what is the limits to these kind of things? Yeah. So, you know, we didn't hear that there was a limit, but the room is rather small. You could probably fit uh, maybe 35, 40 people uh, quite comfortably. You know, it's not super huge, but we invited about, uh, I think, 21 guests, uh, including family, close friends, um, work colleagues, things of that nature. And uh, they were our witnesses. And so it was a very short ceremony. And then after that, uh, we uh, had a reception at a uh, private uh, event hall. And I can talk about that in just a moment. Yeah, let's see. Guys, here's the photo of Eddie's wedding. As you can see, it is absolutely beautiful. And this contract that you have in front of you, uh, is this the one that you're saying you have to sign? That's the document you sign. Absolutely. Oh, man, that's interesting because it it just seems to me, like honestly, it seems to me that it is 
And without, I don't want to offend the Russians, but it's like the minimal. It, it, no, not even the minimal. It's like the, this is how it is. You know, let's get to the point. This is the point of a marriage. You go in there and sign, and then you deal. I, I guess you have a, a party afterwards, but it's not like a, I don't feel like you had like an entrance and a whole dance and stuff. Like, you know how even Mexicans can get a little bit crazy for a wedding, but this seems very to the point. Is well, this well let, let, me, let me back up a little bit. So when you get to Zags, uh, and you you go to the 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 desk and, and check in, and then once you you'll go upstairs. Or this is how it was at the Zags that we went to. You go upstairs, and there's a huge waiting room, and there's there's four or five, maybe six different other couples there as well because they're all getting married about the same time. And there's an office, and you'll be called into this office as a couple, and they will review your documents one more time <laughs> yes so your passport your uh migration card and your registration and they verify that all the information they have matches and once that's done then they say okay step outside and we will call you when we're ready so we waited for about another 20 minutes then uh, they called all of the guests into the ceremony room. So they went in ahead and we waited outside for about five minutes. And then they opened the doors and uh, me and my uh, wife-to-be, Elena, walked hand in hand into the room up to the table. And we sat down at the table and uh, we signed the document. After that, we stood up and we went to uh, another area where you exchange rings. And I apologize, I'm not even wearing a ring today. Yeah, don't tell her, don't tell her. But anyway, uh, so you'll exchange rings at this uh, location. And then after that, you, you're congratulated by family and friends. You take photos. Uh, and uh, after that, you're done. You're free to leave. You're married. Man, so Xenia, you heard the story of how he got married, 20 people. Uh, would you be tell the people how you would feel comfortable? Like if I want to invite the whole town, because that's the kind of Mexican that I am. If I invite the whole town, would you be comfortable with that? Or what kind of wedding do you want? Where would you want to get married? Tell the people uh, what you feel like. Uh, for me, uh, like uh, it's better if you just uh, some close uh, people like friends and your family. Mm. And it's uh, like a special holiday for our small family. And I want to stay like that. It looks like we're in a fight because for <laughs> me, um, I've I've fallen in love with her. But like my town, Sludanka, I swear, if any, I, and I'm going to make like an open invitation to anybody in Sludanka. If they want to come to my wedding, they can come because I'm in my culture, like, it's still it is it takes a village to raise a child that's my mentality so like if i'm going to marry one of their citizens one of their uh people who is from their town i want them to come and witness me and son and los tios them, y tias yeah, right I, yeah they're <laughs> like the uncles and the aunts of her whether they want to believe it or not but like i will invite the whole town and I, actually babe like for me it's not just friends and family, like you said. If the railroad railroad workers are outside drinking something, I'll invite them. I will be so happy to have more witnesses come in. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. Obviously, her and I are gonna have to debate about this. This is what I want for my wedding: a big wedding where more than people that I could feed go. That's why it's better. Uh make marriage like uh, in Vegas or some places uh, where only you and me. Las Vegas? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I would never take you to Las Vegas. It's not a place to go. <laughs> Guys, if you're just joining this live, this live has been, we've been covering how to get married in Russia. My friend here, Eddie, can answer all of your questions. Let's take about five minutes and concentrate on the chat. If you have a question for him, you guys can uh, ask the questions now. And look, your, your question will pop up on the screen and we'll go ahead and answer it. So we'll start off with this one. But before we get on to it, write your questions on the YouTube chat and then we will get to answering them. Do they provide a feast or food, snacks, etc.? How was the feeding uh, at the party? So you, Zags only 
It's it's marriage only. So if you want to party, that is totally up to you. So uh, we organized a uh, private party for private little reception for 21 people. And uh, we decided to have uh, a lunch because we got married in the morning. So we had a lunch and we had a cake and some flowers and some table decorations. We invited a photographer to come take photographs. The uh, loft that we rented actually had table service. So th there were had like three or four guys that were helping to serve food and we had catered lunch, but all of that is on you. And uh, whatever you want to have, that's what you're going to have at your wedding. Okay. So basically the answer is guys, the Zags is an organization that will get you married. If you bring the right paperwork, the party thereafter, even though, even though they do the Zag thing at a hall, I'm guessing it's like a room part of the government, you go in there and sign, but this is not a party room. This is a getting married room. So you don't think about even partying there or maybe getting out of control. This is my guess. I've seen some people getting married in Sri Lanka. It's not a big thing inside where they sign. They go outside. But Xenia, can you tell us when usually people get married? Tell us a little bit about the experiences you've had with people getting married. Uh, usually in Russia, it's uh, more close to summer when it's warm because women all the time wearing a wedding dress and if it's winter you need to put something uh, on top like a jacket and all photos will be maybe not so good and everyone wants uh, beautiful photos and in our place it's like uh, maybe middle of may uh, to se september uh, when it's still warm and nice and people can celebrate and we have not only one day of marriage uh, like uh, when you put stamp and go celebrate in a restaurant or some place uh, usually some uh, people have two days of wedding uh, next day people can go like um, if you live near Baikal you can uh, take some house and go make barbecue and still celebrate it's like two days it's more crazy. <laughs> Two days celebrating? Yeah. yeah. Not all people do it, but uh, usually they do it days. Can you tell us about, uh, you know, you told us usually they do it in the summer, but have you seen winter weddings? How do they celebrate it? What, you know, in Mexico or in America, they have a really extravagant party. Have you ever seen parties like this? Big parties or big celebrations? Yeah, I saw a big celebration. I even was on one of them. Uh, we celebrate all day, first day and second day. We was in natural. Uh, we made shashlik. We uh, play music, dance, and stuff like this. But in winter, it's uh, more small wedding. I think it just uh, uh, how I say it's family and friends, small uh, company who celebrate first day, and that's it. So you've never seen something that's big. That, that was the question. Have you ever seen something big, big, big? Like, I don't know, people bringing tigers and lions and stuff like this. No, we don't no? have it. Have you ever seen that on the news? Because some, some, uh, some Russians are rich. So some Russians can have huge weddings. You've never heard of huge weddings in Russia? Yeah, but they celebrate the same. Like uh, they take uh, some big restaurant, put the every people there, celebrate there. Okay, so from what I'm gathering from this information, guys, actually weddings are not like these huge extravagant, extravagant, extravagant parties like in the West. If you have money in the West and you got a lot of money, you are going to fly people into the different islands. You're going to own and throw huge party like it seems like uh, you're from the way you're describing it is even relax. It's not a big thing. But for us, it's a big thing. Are you, are you, well, that's what I'm asking you. Ava. I'm asking you if anybody does something huge. I don't know. Uh, I never see it. But for us, even you take a big restaurant and yeah. put like 100 people there, it's already big. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, for my wedding, definitely, uh, I won't be going big, but I do, like I said, want to invite as many people as possible. And I do think that I want to uh, have, if my mom can be there, you know, cook pe some good food, some delicious food. Because usually in, in, our, in, our, in my culture, at least, we handle everything from the food, from the music, 
from you there's no way we're gonna go rent a place a restaurant no you have aunts and grandmas and cousins to do all of that kind of stuff can Senia attend a wedding in mexico I can say what in old time in Russia, it was the same. Like uh, if you have a Dutch or something like this, all your family will cook all night, you know, prepare everything. Someone can bring uh, this machine for music and playlist and they will uh, carry you this uh, all night when you celebrate. By the way, Eddie, that, that makes me like wonder, did anybody from her family come at, to the wedding? Like, how was? How did they say congratulations? You know, they must have not spoken English. Some of them. How was that feeling like? Well, you know, her um, uh, father was able to come. Her mother was not able to come. Uh, we were kind of sad about that, but uh, there's great distances in Russia that couldn't be overcome. But uh, close family, uh, what family is here? close friends, which are like family in here in Russia, uh, came to the uh, came to the wedding. A lot of people there spoke English. Uh, some did not, but that doesn't really seem to get in a way of a celebration. You know, just when you're celebrating something, uh, you know, a happy event, it doesn't matter. Everybody speaks the same language, even if it sounds different coming out of your voice. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. you can still communicate with people. Was there any vodka? Was there any alcohol involved? Because the, the stories that Xenia tells me, these people are partying. I mean, I know probably you weren't partying for two to three days, but like there's town parties that go on for that long. Was there any drinking? There was some drinking, but let me let me qualify that because the it, the place that we rented did not allow hard alcohol. So only wine, only champagne. Not that we wanted any vodka or any hard liquor or anything like that or beer, uh, but they only allowed, they only limited us to wine and champagne. When basically we were happy with that, yeah, uh, for for what it was. What about Xenia? The the parties that you've described sometimes in the past, uh, people getting crazy in alcohol because this is a stereotype, you know, where they say, hey the Russians and their vodka and the way they drink. Can you tell me if this happens or not? Yes, uh, in Russia, if, if Russian people celebrate something, doesn't matter if it's raining, New Year, they will drink. And uh, most of them, yeah, they uh, drink uh, vodka, samagon. <laughs> uh, not beer, beer usually it's like a uh, normal day when you want to relax. But when you celebrate something, it's wine, champagne, vodka, and some are gone. If yeah. it's uh, like uh, more uh, for friends and family, for, for close people or like small one, it can be some are gone. If you don't know, some are gone is like the moonshine of, of, <laughs> of, of Russia. This is like, uh, yeah, basically they're homemade vodka moonshine. All right. I don't know if you could hear it, but that ringing on the background. Can you guys hear that? Ding, 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 ding. This cowbell? Mm -hmm. How, why is this thing happening? Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways, that cowbell sound is the trash man in Mexico. They ring ding, 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 and it tells people, hey, go outside and throw out the trash. So this, uh, this live, if you're just joining us, we've been streaming for an hour. Uh, I want to do a recap of the paperwork, Eddie. Uh, the most important paperwork or the necessary paperwork that you need if you want to go to Russia and get married for anybody who's just joining us late and has to hear the cowbell. I'm going to mute myself right now, but can you give us a recap of the paperwork, please, that you need if you want to get married in Russia? Sure. So to break it down again, of course, you will already have your passport because you need that to enter the country. You'll need your visa because you'll need that to enter the country. You'll receive a migration card from Passport Control when you first enter Russia. You'll need that, plus your registration. Because as a foreigner in Russia, you are required to register your domicile while you're living in Russia. So you'll need that form as well. In addition to that, your all of those documents will be in Russian, minus your passport. 
So your passport must be translated into Russian and notarized. So you're going to need that. Now, whether you've been married before or not, you still require one additional document. This document must come from your original jurisdiction. This means the government from where you have permanent residence. So if you're in the United States, it's with your particular state. Uh, if you're from another country, it's going to depend on, on your country's own laws. But I'm going to just stick with the United States because that's what I know best. So you need a form that says you've never been married before or you're not currently married right now, period. And it not only must be notarized, this form must have an apostille from your state's secretary of state. That's what's going to make it official in Russia. So if you just bring the form and it hadn't been apostille, they won't accept it. So do your research. Uh, if you're thinking of coming to Russia beforehand and you think you may want to get married or whatever the situation may be, read up on all of these documents because it will save you time. It will save you money. It will save you heartache because I had to wait about seven, six, seven months and I had to pay money because I had to travel back to the United States just to get this one document that we needed. And once I had that document, it was that quick. No problem. Can you uh, uh, tell us this? A lot of people have mentioned this, you know, the church getting involved. This is not a church thing, right? This is just strictly government. This is strictly government. Uh, civil uh, marriage is a civil union. Uh, it is not a religious union. Now, of course, I'm not Orthodox, so I don't know, but I, I do believe, and if you are Orthodox and you know, let us know in the comments, that you can have a marriage ceremony in church, but it's, I mean, there's nothing legally binding by that. Okay. Okay, here. All right, guys, again, we are in a moment where you guys can ask him anything. He's already been through it, done that. Uh, we can also... Uh, ask things about uh, you guys can also ask about moving to Russia, visiting Russia, because this this uh, live, you know, it not only expands from the wedding portion, but after you get married, Eddie's also applying for Russian residency. This is also something that we wanted to cover today. Uh, could you tell us before you talk about the whole process for that? Uh, why you would even want Russian residency? I'll tell you guys why I would like Russian residency. But Eddie, you're already a hundred, two hundred yards ahead of me on this. Please give us uh, your reason why you want Russian residency. Then tell us about the paperwork. So, if you want to live in Russia long term, then you have to become a resident. Otherwise, you're going to be living in Russia on a visa. And currently, I'm here on a three-year private visa, which means that the end of that three year. I would have to leave Russia, go back to the United States, apply for another visa, get granted a visa, and then come back into Russia. One of the other things that you must do if you have a visa and you're in, in Russia on a visa is if, you, if you're an American, you can stay in Russia for up to 180 days, and that's it. Then you have to make a border run. That means you have to physically leave Russia and then step back into the country to reset that 180-day clock. So that is mandatory. Once you have residency, you don't have to do that. So that's one good thing. The second part of being a, a resident is that you ha now have the ability to work. And you, uh, and what I mean by work is work legally. Some people like can work, but they pay you cash under the table. Uh, I don't want any. I don't want any part of that. Let's do it right. You can get a job with temporary residency. Also, you qualify for the government uh, medical insurance, just like a citizen does. So you get sick, you can go to one of the polyclinics. 
you can get medical attention. You can go to a hospital, a government hospital, if you need uh, emergency services and it's covered by the government. So this is a tremendous, tremendous benefit. And even just having temporary residency, you have basically all of the benefits of a citizen minus the privilege to vote. That's it. So uh, if you're going to be in Russia long term, you're going to want residency. Yeah. And actually, guys, the biggest problem that I've had in Russia is having to get out and come back in. And I know a lot of people, if you're in the center of Russia, it's really hard. If you're in the middle of Russia to the north, there's absolutely no country that's close enough. Senya, how many times did we go to Mongolia? Four or five times. And that's because I needed to renew my, my stay and reset the timer. And uh, getting a Russian residency is a huge game changer because you won't have to be worrying about leaving the country in, in a such short amount of time. You won't have to be worried about, oh, do I have the right paperwork, like register myself every time I come in? No, I'm assuming that as a resident with the paperwork, you show this is who I am. And uh, it's much easier. Now, I had to ask a question for myself. Can you get married in Russia with only a, a private visa or can you get married? Do you know if you can get married with a student visa? Or, no, no, no. Or, you, or... you can get married on, as far as I know, any kind of visa because the visa just allows you to be legally in Russia at that particular time. So you're legally in the country, no problem. You can get married. But then you would still have to abide by the, whatever time constraints you have on your visa. So if you need to leave the country, you're going to need to leave the country, whether you're married or not. Oh man! And I'm and I know uh, from your story when you had to go back and get that paper, man. Tell us, and I'll tell the people after. How does it feel to have to leave Russia? There's always this thought in your mind. Uh, especially with the situation that, that is going on now and the political situation back in the States. You know, one, when you leave Russia, I'm wondering, will they ever let me not just come back into Russia? Will they let me leave the United States? <laughs> That's yeah. one question. And then the other one is, when you get here, will they let me back in? Uh, fortunately, there's been no issues whatsoever. Uh, when I've left Russia and come back in, everything, even when I've gone through, when I went back in December and went through customs in, in the States and, you know, I go to the uh, customs inspector and he says, where are you coming from? And I said, I'm coming from uh, Istanbul, which is true. And he says, where'd you originally come from? I said, Moscow. He said, what are you doing there? <laughs> I said, well, I live there with my fiance. And he's like, okay, welcome to America. That was it. Yeah. It was that quick. It was the exact thing that happened to me. They asked me, like, hey, where are you coming from? I said, Mongolia, because actually when I travel from Russia to I said, Mongolia. And he said, no, but where were you before? Exact words. And I told mm -hmm. Senya, I said, oh, they Russia. Know. And then he said, how long were you there? I was like, uh, a year and some time. And he's like, a year? What were you doing? I was like, I was with my fiance. And the, and the guy's like, in Russia, and I was like, yeah. He's like, okay, welcome to America. The same process. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like as Americans, and this might be contra contrary to a lot of what people believe. I, th I feel like we're under more scrutiny and like, and like uh, from our own people, of course, coming in. Because when Xenia leaves Russia, babe, what kind of stuff do they ask you when you came to Mexico or when you go through Mongolia? How is it for you? Uh, Russians don't ask me nothing. Uh, when I come to Mongolia, they don't ask me nothing too. Uh, when I come to Mexico, they ask me only ticket back and that's it. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure she would, like, I get nervous for some reason. It just feels like, I mean, are we suddenly going to have a law where it says jail everybody who visited Russia? And, you know, that goes through my head. Um, but anyways, guys... Today we've covered how to get married. Again, I'm going to keep telling you uh, to subscribe to his channel because actually he's a great guy. He's a true friend of mine and Xenia's. I've told you already, we've met him in Moscow and he creates content 
from a different point of view, you know, uh, he's in a special place. This is Moscow. This is the capital of the Russian Federation. I've already pinned his information on the chat on YouTube. He's so close to 4,000 subscribers. It costs you nothing to check out his channel, guys. This is a free thing that you can do. If you're watching this live, you're obviously interested in what's going on in Russia, Russian life, Russian culture, any uh, up to, uh, recent news. So head over to his channel. You can do it by opening a new tab, by right-clicking his information on the top, on the chat, right-click, open on a new tab, and subscribe to his channel. He is a great guy. He's given his time today to give you the information that you needed or wanted to know for getting married in Russia or moving to Russia. This is important stuff. So let's go on to some more questions. Let's see. Is there people who speak Spanish in Russia? Absolutely. Gabby. <laughs> Gabby, the health coach, asking this. Listen, Eddie's one of them. When I met him in Russia, I know he's not Russian, but he is in Russia. We spoke Spanish. Not only that, but we spent the whole night with, uh, I think it was two Russian citizens who spoke Spanish. Spanish, yeah. Yeah, it was impressive. So there are some people who speak Spanish in Russia. And not Damn, only can, do can I tell you a quick story? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, about this. So I was here in my apartment complex. And one morning I, I was going out and I got into the elevator, come down a couple of floors and this babushka walks in and uh, I'm still learning Russian. OK, I'm like a one level, maybe maybe a two on a good day. And I, I always get nervous a little bit when they start talking to me because they talk really fast. So I was hoping she wouldn't say anything. So she turns to me and she says, good morning, of course, in Russian. And I say, good morning to her. And then she starts asking me questions. And I just said, you know, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I only know a little bit of uh, Russian. And she, I think, detected something in my accent because then she asked me, what other language do you speak? And I said, uh, Ispansky. And she was like, what? And she starts speaking Spanish to me. And I was like, oh, my God, are you for real? So we walked out, and she's telling me that she lived for, I don't know, how many years in Venezuela. And uh, this was back in, I think, the 90s, 80s or 90s. And she loved it so much. She was only there for five years, but she learned the language moved back to Russia, and she says she hadn't spoken uh, Spanish for years, and she thought that that uh, she had forgotten it. Anyway, it made her day to speak Spanish again, and it made my day to know that there was at least someone else in this building <laughs> that speaks Spanish as well. It, it was really it's cool. definitely a, an awesome feeling. Honestly, those are the moments that they're like uh, little treats, you know, during the year Absolutely. that you run into stuff like that. And thank you for sharing that story. Now, Sabina wants to know, uh, here you can see she's a translator in Poland. And if someone does not know Polish, the translator must be present during the ceremony and translate orally what the official says and what the foreigner says. Did, did you have to answer in Russian? And if you didn't, uh, if you had to answer some things in English, was there a translator there? Okay, so I was told that at one time in Russian history, you did, uh, the foreigners were required to have a translator present. That is no longer the case. Uh, but at the same time, I understood what I was being asked. So it, it wasn't uh, a problem with me. But there used to be that requirement here in Russia, and it's no longer a requirement. Okay, uh, thank you for answering that question. Uh, hopefully, you're still here watching, Sabina. That's the answer. Now, uh, Susha, can you answer what uh, Vadim is writing? Can you? What is he saying? Privet, Xenia, Prekasno, this. Are you ready to go back? Ah. Are you ready to go back? Yeah. You know, I saw recently. You know that people were thinking that. Uh, Xenia came to Mexico to go to the United States. I would never put that hell upon her because I'm from California, guys. And if you don't know how California life is, it's very, very, very uh, weird and strange for a Russian maybe to assimilate unless you have a lot of money. Now, 
we are not in Mexico to travel to the United States. We're actually in Mexico because she always wanted to go to Cancun. We're going to Cancun in two days. I want to show her the culture there in the south of Mexico. And we're going to be going home in May. I'm not going to give you guys the exact date, but we're going back to Russia in May. And just put it this way. There is nothing that is going to come between me and fishing in summer in Siberia. That is it. I don't care if you guys think I'm selfish. If, oh, you don't love her, you just love fishing. I don't care. I don't care. And that's just how it works. And another thing, I miss her father and I miss my town. I miss, you know, my life there. And I, I think she misses it too, but I, she's like, oh, let's stay in Mexico longer. I can't do it. I can't take it anymore. We're going back home. Uh, Mexico is only a vacation, but Sludanka is home. So. Yeah, but I enjoyed Mexico so much. We was uh, already like Ajijic, uh, Masamitla. Uh, we was in his uh, village where he grew up. No, it's not a village. It's just a, a ranch. Yes, but you show me a small village uh, where you come uh, sell oh, yeah. stuff with your grandfather. And we're not recording because we just enjoy this time. We even don't want to make any photos. Uh, we made photos, but not like a lot. Like Usually I made photos like that. But in this time, for some reason, we just enjoy. We just stay here and just try to do everything what we see. It's so nice. And, I don't know. I really want to spend more time here. Eddie, what about after you got married? Uh, did you honeymoon in Russia or did you go to Turkey or something like this? So what we have not we have not taken a honeymoon yet because this was in February when we got married, February 17th. And so it, uh, right after that, we had to apply for temporary residency. And that's a whole other story we can talk about maybe another day. Uh, so there wasn't time to take a uh, honeymoon. Plus, it's kind of cold and we kind of want to go somewhere where it's maybe a little warmer and maybe a little wet, maybe things like that. So we're going to wait till summer and uh, yeah, and have a honeymoon. Makes, somewhere. It makes sense. Like the Russian people, like they, like Senia will be like, oh, let's wait for the summer for this. It's just the summer. And you know that winter, as soon as it ends, man, it's such a dirty uh, just a uh, mushy place all over. If it's if it's like that in the cities, in, in the towns, it's much, much uh, worse. worse. Now, let's see. Guys, um, I don't blame you for wanting to enjoy the land where your future husband is from. Yeah, honestly, my friends, I feel that uh, as a Mexican-American who grew up a long time in Mexico, I feel that Russian people are not educated in other cultures, as much as like when we come to their land, we try to embrace it. Like as, at least I do. And everybody who I met, all the expats, they embrace and assimilate to the Russian culture. And one thing that I can tell is that the Russian people, it's a, they don't really know the outside world. Russia is massive. Um, if I told the people like Senya, she maybe knows Cancun. But if, if I told her like, hey, can you maybe name three oblasts? which are called states in Mexico, she would have no idea. And I feel like people who travel to Russia immediately start gathering information because it is, you. I've told it before, Russia is played on an expert server. It's not for beginner guys. It's not for beginners. You're not going to be playing on easy mode in Russia. So you really got to assimilate. Um, let's see. What, what other questions do you guys have? For my guest, Eddie, uh, he is in Moscow. He has his own channel. He's already been pinned on the comment section. Um, we have, we're have we taking questions about moving to Russia, getting married in Russia. You could also ask Ksenia any questions for her perspective. We're going to be on here for a few more minutes, so just take the time and uh, ask what you any questions that you have on mind in mind. Yeah, it depends on where, where you live. But I'm telling you right now, uh, I don't think uh, as like I think that Russians really ate a lot of Western uh, a lot of Western culture like America and Hollywood. But when it comes to like Mexico or if you ask them about Honduras or El Salvador, anything south of the United States, I just I'm telling you, this is what I feel that they're not uh, really caught up on that. I think that Russians now, because of sanctions, will look outwards into like 
there's a bunch of Russians in Thailand and India and stuff like this. And that's where the, the information is going to start coming to them. Oh, here's a good one. This is really good, Eddie. Do you have to speak Russian to get residency? Duh. Yes, you do. Uh, there is a test that uh, you have to take. It is three-part test. It is reading, writing, uh, listening, and then uh, taking your written test. And then there's an oral part. It is recorded as well. But having said that, it is really easy. Um, it's, it's easy if you're probably at A1, A2 level uh, in Russian, you should not have too much difficulty whatsoever. Uh, but you will need to know some Russian. Yeah. And, you know, it's really important for me as someone who hasn't learned a lot of Russian to start learning it. But if you're coming as a tourist, let's separate the, the tourism from a residency. You need no Russian. And, and I'm not saying that it's good to be ignorant, but do not be scared to travel to Russia if you don't know the language. You don't need it, guys. These people are very friendly. If you go to the store, they'll help you. You can see numbers. I was already shopping, right, babe? Yeah. I was shopping. Can you tell them a little bit about that, how I used to do things outside? When I was at work in Irkutsk, I, I was at work 12 hours and uh, two hours I spent to uh, go to work and go back. And it's 14 hours and he uh, go to the store, buy food and cook uh, when I'm working and he do it by himself. Yeah. So and this was like two weeks after we got together, moved in together. I had already been in Russia for some time. And I learned nothing. And with her, of course, uh, spasiba, all these things. But anyways, let's move on to this question here. And we will be answering them uh, as they're coming in. Ross, you're next. I'm an African-American in the United States, but I would like to live in Russia now. What part of Russia is warmer? Uh, definitely the places that are next to the Black Sea. And uh, is that the Caspian Sea? Do they have? I don't know what that big sea is. Like near the Caucasus. And uh, near Sochi, this is much warmer weather. Um, can you do you know any warm places, babe? It's Sochi, Krasnodar. Yeah, Krasnodar oh, region. Place, yeah. And you know, uh, Tigre, uh, Tigre, they do have warmer climate in Russia, and they even have deserts in Russia. Um, the biggest misconception is that. All of Russia is like Siberia. It's definitely not. You know, some places are definitely warmer. Some places see less snowfall. But I'll tell you the most important thing you need to know that the Siberians say that the Siberian is not the person who can withstand the cold. It's the person who can dress for the cold. So even if you're a person who cannot withstand the cold, you're going to have the right and appropriate clothing for it. And trust me, it is so comfortable and you feel really good walking outside. I, I would like to add to that, Dan, if I yeah. could, that if you are coming to Russia in winter, leave your Western American winter clothes at home, okay? Because <laughs> you want to buy cold weather clothes in Russia because yeah. they know how to make clothing. Uh, my, my Elena made a believer out of me uh, when I first came here and she looked at my clothes and she was like, oh my gosh, aren't you freezing? And I'm like, I'm trying to be, you know, all macho and man. I'm like, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. And she was like, no, I've, we've got to get you some real winter clothes. Having gone through that, bought the real winter clothes, I can tell you uh, cold weather is nothing. If you have proper clothing, that's, that's the secret. That's the secret. Yeah. I went through the same thing, you know, Susha, or this way, oh, how do I do it? This one right here. She told me, oh, we need to have the right clothes. And I almost died in winter in Mongolia. Straight up almost died for not having winter clothes. I was running around at six in the morning screaming for help because I was freezing. So you could still freeze if you don't have the appropriate clothing. All right, let's see. Uh, this question's always asked. Guys, I am not going to get into the money problem because, listen, it changes all the time. The best thing you can do is bring cash. Eddie and I have mentioned this in our own separate videos. Cash is king. I, I'm. Uh, you're not going to be able to retire right now in Russia unless you're doing. Unless you're a crypto kind of person. I don't trust crypto. Um, I know there's crypto ways, but I don't have a pension that goes 
to my Russian bank account. That doesn't exist. The sanctions are still hitting us. And even though we're not Russian, we are affected. Bring cash. I don't know why people want to retire in Russia if you're not even a Russian citizen or a resident. Come to visit Russia first. Come as a tourist. I've made videos about this. Do not move to Russia. These people who, who make videos who are not even Russian citizens and saying come move to Russia are, are idiots. And I'm going to say it plain and simple because they don't know that they're giving false narratives. Russia is not the perfect country. It is not the perfect country for many people. But if you come and visit it, it can become the perfect country. And, you know, I might expand on this on a, on a future video. It just blows my mind that a lot of a lot of people watching want to move to Russia without ever being here. Can you elaborate on this, Eddie? Because I feel like I, I've yeah, broken record. That would be that would be very difficult if you don't have some sort of support here, because one, you don't know the language, you don't know the customs, you don't know the culture, you don't know the government bureaucracy. And the fact that you're a foreigner doesn't mean anything because, you know, these people in these government offices just look at you like, like that. Okay. Yeah. You're nobody. And so you have to have some sort of support before. And the only way to know that if Russia is a good fit for you, is you got to come visit. So I always recommend that I say on my channel, I say it to everybody, come visit, get your visa, come for a visit, stay for a week, two weeks, see what it's like. You may like it, you may not. If it's something that that does call to you, now you can start with, with a better understanding of, of what you're going to need to do under for your specific circumstances. Dan and I cannot answer those questions for you because we just don't know your circumstances. And plus, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, there's there's talk right now in the in the Duma about changing immigration laws. And I have a feeling some some changes are going to come and they may affect uh, immigration. Uh, and as far as for for foreigners on how to come into to Russia. So yeah. you never know. It's Come definitely going to change. You know, you know, these last two years, man, have been up and down. You know, even Xenia, we've had so many problems in life just because of the circumstances. Guys, Russia is on an expert level. This is not for beginners. This, If you want beginners, maybe come to Mexico because here, at least the life, even though with the car, we have the cartels, even here, you know, you just relax and don't have to worry about the cops bothering you. Xenia has had no worries walking around with absolutely no paperwork. In Russia, it's expert level. Let's see. Let's see more questions here. I saw one earlier that, you know, is a big misconception. Uh, do Russians have any fear of USSR style governments returning? Most Americans confuse Russia with the USSR. I recently made a video uh, talking about why the why Americans hate Russians, like hate Russians, because I think Americans have been uh, brainwashed into believing that Russians have uh, this type of mentality. I don't think that Russians are thinking about a USSR, USSR style government like the Russians, I've already said, are too worried about putting food on their table and wishing that winter is over and they enjoy life. They go outside when their son, you know, like they're so down to earth. I don't think that the majority of Russians are thinking about any of this type of stuff. Mute. I hope you understand. I'm not trying to make go around, beat around the bush, but from experience, babe, you tell the people you're the only Russian on this cast right now. Do you fear that the, the Russians are going to be like back to Soviet style and have like dictatorships and stuff like this? No, I don't think so. I think it's not gonna happen. Yeah, but what kind of things do you do you think about in Russia? I don't know. Uh, uh, Russia, anyways, will try to protect yourself, like a country, because uh, it's all the time uh, so bad things happen with Russia, and uh, now our president try protect, uh, try uh, restart uh, this country from old time. It's it's not uh, will change uh, way back like on Soviet time. No, it's will just. Uh, 
tell I don't us know how, how say it in English. It's like. okay. <laughs> tell us about when the Soviet Union fell. You grew up, uh, you were born in the Soviet Union, but you grew up after the Soviet Union fell. Tell us the difference between uh, the life after the Soviet Union and then after Putin. Tell us before Putin came, how was the 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 world? How I remember when I was small, uh, we must stay on the line to the store and we have paper for food. We must uh, go stay on this big line and give this paper. If they have this food, they will give you. If not, you will don't have it. And we don't have any candy, uh, nothing like we have now. Now you go to the store, you have everything like seafood, every kind of seafood, every meat candy, uh, juice, everything, whatever yeah. you want. But before, we don't have almost nothing. And you must uh, prepare yourself. Like my mom, she made uh, bread uh, at home. And uh, if you don't have tea, you just uh, like uh, fry sugar and put water there. It will be your tea. Uh, candy we made yourself. We fry sugar the same and put we have metal thing for candy. And you put there uh, fried sugar and put like a stick of made fire, put there, and it will be like lollipop. <laughs> Joseph Stalin comes in the chat. He's like, it's not my fault. <laughs> He's right but there. This is so funny. I think in this time, people learn how to survive, how to make his life. And it was very delicious candy for us. It's take a piece of bread, put uh, butter, and put little sugar on top. Or you uh, take a piece of butter, but bread, uh, put little water, and sugar. Sugar melt and start be like uh, crispy. Oh, it was so delicious. And kids now, they don't understand how it was delicious. And we enjoy it. We learn how to do things. We learn how to survive. And now we still have joke. Like if you grow up in this time, you not die because you know how to survive. All right. Uh, so Ron says you look so young to me. Uh, I, I hate to play this game, babe, but I'm going to ask everybody who's watching how old do you think Senya is? Because a lot of people sometimes uh, in in person in real life here in Mexico say, "Hey, you're too old for her," or they feel like I'm like abducting her. Well, how old? Everybody in chat. Right, right now, how old do you think Senya is? Make her feel good. Don't be nice. Don't be mean. And guess like forty nine. She's not gonna get offended. Uh, while you guys are guessing, if you're just joining the stream again, um, we have my friend uh, Eddie, and he's joining us from Moscow. He's actually uh, in Moscow right now. I'm not in Russia. He is creating content from Russia. Um, unique content please subscribe to his channel i've pinned his channel on the chat let's go check i'm gonna click the chat uh the pinned comment he's at uh, 3.93 at least halfway to the next thousand don't Dan, you are frozen on this end. Oh, are we back? Okay, I think you're you're back on this end. Okay, okay. I forgot. I forgot. I was spewing about. Uh, if you thank you, Ron me, Hunter. Yeah, twenty six. So yeah, look the. Here's the guesses. Oh, that's not fair. She already knows forty two VR. That's rude. Well, I know her age. Yeah, if you know her age, you shouldn't say it. I mean, guys, a lot of you guys already know her age. But, yeah, the point is she does look very young. And I think that the the thing is that she is in a cold climate. This is like my, my joke that I make with her. She's like frozen in time because she's from Siberia. But that's just how it is. Okay, as I was saying, my friends, uh, the Moscow photographer, he is my friend. His name is Eddie. He is from Texas, and he came on today to talk about how it is to get married in Russia. He has a lot of information, a lot of things that I can't tell you because I haven't crossed that bridge yet, guys. I don't know what it's like, what paperwork. Well, now I know, but I'm saying before him, we don't know the paperwork. 
We don't know the process. If these are things that you thinking about moving to Russia or visiting as a tourist, here's another source of information. He speaks English, obviously, and he's a nice guy. Let's see. Um, I'm going to move on on this section of the live. And I want to talk about my plans on getting married. Uh, exactly when I want to get married, I want to have Xenia's opinion. Xenia, when is the best month for you, do you think, after we get back to Russia, we're going to start doing the paperwork? What is the month you want to get married? I think like uh, June, July, it's the uh, most warmer time uh, in our area. And it just, you need to pray what it will be sun, not rain. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do you think the kind of celebrations, you know, we've already talked about the people who will come, but what do you want to do? Do you want to do a gathering at the house? Do you want to have a banquet? Do you want to get married in Sludanka, in Moscow, anywhere else, Irkutsk? Uh, I think it's better in Sludanka because it's my hometown. I love this place. And for me, I will be, feel comfortable there. And uh, how I say, I don't want it so big. And maybe even uh, we can go to Baikal. You even can make beautiful photo there for your memories uh, near Baikal. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> um, look, here we have a brother of ours, Eddie. He's also Mexican-American. Mm. And uh, Trigger, listen, uh, you're not alone. I'm telling you right now, I think that being Mexican-American is a plus in Russia because you're not – just an Anglo-Saxon, right? We um, A Mexican culture and our heritage and our genetics is made up of European and Native American blood. So we offer genetically a beautiful mix for the Russian girls. I'm going to say right now, in Russia, I think that Russian girls like a little bit of variety. What, what do you, I know that you married your wife, Eddie, but from what you see, do you see Russian girls with other ethnicities? Yes, of course you do. And uh, <clears throat> if I may say that when... When my wife first realized that the person she was talking to was an American, the first thought out of her mind was like, oh, no, he's American, you know. <laughs> but then when she when she discovered that, you know, ethnically I was, you know, Hispanic and from the Mexican culture, it kind of uh, changed things a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to go and explain what those details are, but you know, there's there's something about, you know, the little Latin spice, you know what I mean? It's a, it's different. And plus, our our culture is very similar to Russian culture. Uh, also, they're just similar. And so it's just an easy fit, a lot easier fit. And uh, the fact that we have our own independent language other than English, that we have our own food, our own... Uh, 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 music and culture and things like that. It, I, I think it's a plus. I think it's a plus. I think it's a plus, definitely. Now, look, trigger from experience. Look, you're asking to take a look. You can get married in Russia, okay? We've already covered that. But bringing a Russian back to the United States right now is is very difficult, um, unless you do it illegally, like like a lot of people are doing it. But I would not suggest that. I personally, I still love my country, and I don't condone like illegal crossing into the United States. I don't care even if it's Senya. I would never cross her illegally. This is not my style. But I'll tell you right now, the process to get Rus uh, American citizenship or moving your Russian wife to uh, America is very difficult right now. Senya, you have a friend who married, right? And her said, how long did it take your friend to get citizenship, your Russian friend? Uh, I think like uh, six, seven years. Six or seven years to get citizenship. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the programs for Getting the green card is very, very long right now, especially with the border problem happening in the United States. I would suggest you not moving your fiance or your bride back to the United States right now. It is not a good time. Instead, if you want to visit Russia and you have the brains and the education or the money to go to Russia for five to six months, just go there, man. You might fall in love with that place. You might change your life. You know, life is so short that you never know when the next turn can be the next part of your life, the next chapter. In today's world, it is not good to stay where you were born. It's not even good to stay in the same state as you were born. Travel, man. See the world. 
This world is going crazy. The best advice I have for you is do not bring your bride to the United States. I'm positive she will get bored after a month or two. I think that Russia is way more exciting. It's bigger than the United States. It has more culture than the United States. And there's more things that you can enjoy and that she can enjoy in Russia than you and her can enjoy in the United States. I'm telling you, she'll get tired of the Levi's and the Kardashians on the television very fast. Let's see. Any more questions, guys? That's just my opinion, by the way. All, all these things that I say is just my opinion. Eddie says his opinions. Don't take them for, for the truth. I just feel that I'm a little bit extreme, but I feel it's... it's well, uh, here, you know, here's what I say, Dan. Okay, don't if you don't believe us, come find out for yourself. Yeah. Come find out for yourself. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh Scooter wants to know what kind of fish I, 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 I catch out here. We catch pike, perch, omul. Uh, omul is in, in, endemic to the Baikal area. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I go, how do you see? Yeah, but I don't, I don't like fly fishing. Her father likes fly fishing because like the older Russians, they love uh, doing fish in rivers and stuff like this. I'm a late guy. I'm a bank. I'm a bank fisherman. I go for the, yeah, the, the, the head grayling or harius. I love catching the big shuka, the big pike. Uh, let's Long see. Long casting. Yeah, I'm going out there, man. I caught a big, big boy last year. Two, five to six years to get uh, U.S. citizenship. That's not a long time. Actually, it is a long time if you want to start a family. Reno, I, I completely disagree with you. If I'm 34 and right now and Xenia's 34, Five to six years puts us in our in our forties, and we already want to start a life. So I'm going to start my life in Russia and bring it back to Mexico or the United States, depending on what I want. But Russia is definitely the faster option. What do you say about that, uh, Eddie? Do you agree? Like, could you imagine her moving to the United States right now? I, I think it would. I think it would be. Um, I think it might be an adventure. In the short term, as you say, but after a while, it's going to, it, it, uh, no, especially, <laughs> let's just say, you know, when, when you have, when, when you have a lot of pressure on children to accept LGBTQ and to accept uh, multi genders and, and just all of this nonsense. Your you just your common sense just says no, and and I don't want to raise my children here, so uh, I think it would just get to a point where you'd say no, I, I want out, and yeah. uh, I, I would if I had to raise children today, and I'm talking about from newborn, I'm going to raise them in Russia, no doubt about it. They will not be raised in in uh, America as it is right now. If America changes changes course and gets back to to God and, and it's to its roots, maybe, but not right now. Uh, we have new people coming into the chat, as you can see. They want to hear the paperwork again. Just give a quick summary, Eddie, of so, the paperwork. And by the way, before you get into it, everything that he says right now has to be translated into Russian. That goes without saying. Go ahead. So passport, visa, Migration card, which you will get at uh, Passport Control when you enter the country, and your registration once you register uh, your domicile. The other document you're going to need is the mo probably the most important, and you need to bring that with you when you come from the United States. And that is a document from your original jurisdiction where you have residence that says that you're either not currently married or you've never been married. And it must be notarized and apostille. Otherwise, it's no good. It's no good. Now, Joseph Stalin, babe, and uh, I'm putting him on the on the thing because it's such a funny meme here. But anyways, yeah, USA is not family friendly anymore. Babe, what do you think, Senya, as a Russian, from what you know about America, would you be okay with having your kids in America? Not so much. I don't like uh, this uh, LGBT stuff too, and uh, I don't know. I little don't like uh, laws so where you can uh, have gun at home. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it, so many uh, crazy things happen because of this. Uh, even in Russia, parents who are not uh, carrying this own gun for hunting can happen so big tragedy in family in this. And that's why I don't like it. I don't want any gun in my family. I want to live normal, simple life. You're like, really? Oh, no, you're, now you're talking crazy. Look, listen. What? I'm talking about if it... Well, okay, what about in Mexico? Let's see. This is going to be interesting. What about in Mexico? Uh, yes and no. Because in Mexico, it's uh, the same uh, uh, LGBT stuff, uh, <laughs> like a lot. So it sounds like the biggest problem for, for her as a Russian is the LGBT stuff. And I'll tell you what. Uh, the biggest difference between LGBT in Mexico and LGBT in the United States is uh, the the presidents and the politicians don't push it on the citizens as much in Mexico. Here, yes, we have gays and they'll do whatever the hell they want, but our politicians are not throwing it and pushing it down our throats. Like in the United States, babe, they really want to push it down and they really want you to accept and 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 do it this way. I've made a video about this, guys. You need to check out my most recent content and Eddie's most recent content. We produce videos uh, on our channels, obviously, but I cover some politics stuff because actually uh, as, a, as a veteran of, of uh, the United States, it hurts me so much a little bit more that my country is going down a weird route, spiraling out of control. And so I cover some of these topics. Um, but Axenia says she has a problem with this. I personally... I'm 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 a little bit liberal in this until it messes with the kids. I don't care who you decide to sleep with. I don't yeah. care if you want to do it in the streets. It's the same for me. I don't care about this, but I don't want my kid look like uh, where is all official like you must uh, uh, know what is uh, all this stuff happening. You must uh, take it. No, uh, my kid. I want my kid be traditional. Uh, what uh, boy is boy, girl is girl and uh, nothing else and when he grow up okay you can do whatever you want but when you're small when you just uh put all in your head you must be traditional how it's all the time was all right so well, that's a traditional i guess russian woman that you guys just got done hearing uh that is more than i've ever heard from her so i'm really happy that she's opening up uh if you want to contact me uh by the way the best way to do it is on Telegram. I respond to everybody at least once, unless you're a psychopath. Um, and my my guest, oh wait, by the way, the wild Siberian is my Telegram. And by the way, if you're watching right now, just joining us, I again, my guest is Eddie. His channel is the, the Moscow Photographer. Guys, subscribe to him. It's free. Everything is free. You can unsubscribe if you don't like it, but give it a chance. Go check out his content. He is in the capital of the Russian Federation, Russia, a country here. I have uh, the Russian flag here. Uh, he is in he is in Russia. He can produce content that I cannot produce. And if you like watching my channel, hey, he's a good friend of mine. Check out his channel. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Any other questions? What about the rice water drink? <laughs> Xenia, they want to know about, are uh, you drinking horchata? Da? <laughs> horchata. It's, uh, how Russian can say it. <laughs> Ask it if you like, they want to know if you like it. Uh, yes. It's like uh, two types of this. What? Yes, there's two types. Yeah. One type, uh, not so good, but one type is uh, really good. But some places made it uh, too sweet. I like when it's not so sweet and it's really good. I like it. We almost uh, all the time drink it, but uh, more like uh, fruits water. What we buy on the street is like milk fruits or something like that. It's so delicious. Yeah. But I don't like. Uh, oh, don't say nothing. I will say myself. It's called. Oh, I forgot. What. You don't like the Moors? I know what yeah. she doesn't like. She don't like Jamaica. Why? Jamaica? Are you Jamaica? serious? No. Wait, which one? Which one then? Corn. Corn. Uh... Oh, okay. She don't like Tejuino. Like uh, here in, in Guadalajara, guys, there's a, we, oh my God, there's an infinite amount of things that Mexicans make with corn and uh, she don't like Tejuino. 
I think Mexicans, we do eat a lot too much lemon. We put lemon in chili and everything. Yeah, but uh, I know why uh, Mexicans drink it because when it's really hot, uh, you drink it just a little bit and you feel fresh. For some reason, it's made you so fresh, not hot. It was on this holiday, this juice, and I like, no, I try it. I don't like it. Uh, it's like sour and maybe salt. And it's not my flavor, but when I start drinking it and drink like, and it's like, oh, it's so fresh, it's so good. And I finish this juice. I don't like what I finish and I feel so good myself. And I understand why people drink it. Okay, good. So you don't. You said you don't like it. Was it that bad? It's not that bad, but uh, if it can help you uh, feel comfortable on uh, this weather, yeah, I can drink it. But I will don't drink because I will enjoy it. All right. Now that she said something that she don't like about Mexico, Eddie, can you tell the viewers something that you can't or dis uh, can't handle eating in Russia? I'll just say right away, I don't like borscht. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, there's not much that I don't like food-wise food, yeah, food food. in, in Russia. Um, but there's a whole bunch of foods that I do like, but they're not Russian. <laughs> they're usually either Georgian or Uzbek. or uh, It's usually because the Uzbek cuisine, the, the, the cuisine from the Caucasus is usually heavier in meat. And I'm a meat eater. You know, I love that. And... Uh, so I do eat, uh, love, I do eat borscht. I do enjoy it, uh, but I'm not crazy about it. Let's just say. Okay. Okay. What if they gave you borscht for a whole week? Are you not, are you going to eat it all week? I'll eat it all week. Oh, hell I'll no. I'll survive. I'll survive. I don't, I'm not doing <laughs> it. I'm not doing it. And I told her, I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. I don't care if the Russian don't like me because I don't eat borscht. I said, okay, then come to Mexico and I'll feed you uh, grasshoppers for a week and we'll see if you like it. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. I know that uh, it's so typical. Xenia is walking around in the street here and I show her, right, babe? There's grasshoppers and bugs that they sell on the street. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't uh, even try it, but I already eat cactus and... Uh, it was uh, good. Oh, well, cactus is good. Not so good, but one yesterday we ate it so good. I put in my salad and put guacamole. Yeah, she's talking about, by the way, guys, the, the plant is called anopal, and this is what she calls cactus. Um, yeah, you know, now this guy's asking about ensaladas. This is what my mom made for you, and you said it was similar to the Russian food. Yes, it's similar like a uh, Russian salad. It's called winter salad. Can you bring it, babe? It's in the refrigerator. I just want to show it to you guys. Eddie, you're crazy. There's no way I'm eating borscht all week. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I'm not doing, I hate what, it. What's your favorite food then? My favorite food is probably, and, and, and I think it's not even uh, Russian. Babe, is the soup that you make Russian? Yeah. What is it called? Uh, it's like, uh, it's called in Russian, tushona kartoshka. Tushona kartoshka. It's basically like a, a, a it's chicken and potato soup. But for mm -hmm. some reason, it has extra spice that I like, and I like it. Russian can say it's a really that, winter salad. Yeah, my mom made this. This is like a salad of, of a potato salad with chicken. And she's like, oh, it tastes like Russian. Okay, well, that's good. It's remind me home. It's boiled potatoes, carrot, uh, peas. Uh, we put their uh, pickles, so they don't put it. And chicken. Yeah. The same. Do Russian have any any spicy food? And I think no, because I think it's the Georgians who make the spicy food and the Russians eat it. For some reason, like Eddie said, like some of the greatest food in Russia is not even Russian. I love Georgian food. Yeah, mm -hmm. like uh, shashlik, it's not Russian food. And every Russian, when it's summer, they go on a uh, forest, river, and make shashlik. Yeah. Do you like shawarma? Shawarma? Yeah, yeah. yeah we eat yeah. all the time. I yeah. mean, it's like... It's like the the Come Mexicans on. closest taco, you know. Yeah. In Russia. Come on now, like we had a moment. Shawarma we used to eat all the time in Irkutsk. Huh? Yeah, when we walk at night and yeah. when it's uh, start everything open like at eight, mm -hmm. uh, we go eat shawarma. I think that the reason why the food that comes from outside countries to me is more appealing 
is because they use different spices that I think Russians don't use in their food. For some reason, like the Georgian sauce for, for the pilmini, the, the tomato sauce. Oh, forget it. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. And like uh, <laughs> the the way your father marinates the shashlik. Also, he, we use different stuff. Also, the pil, uh, no, not the pilmini. The, what is this? I don't know. I had a brain fart. It's the Georgians and these other oh, people. Oh, make... Yeah, this is also a Georgian. Oh, no, 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 not Hachipuri. No. Hinkali. It's look like dumpling, like that. Yeah, that's also also Georgian. Yeah, Hinkali. It's called Hinkali. Yeah, it's but the Uzbeks, and... the Uzbeks make this rice and also make Whoa. the meat better. Yeah, that's way better. I'm agreeing with him. This is definitely uh, the food that comes outside of Russian is also... It, the thing is, it has more spices. And as Mexicans, we're used to a little bit of a bite. You know what I mean? It, it's like, it, tinopica, you know? It, it's like we can't taste it. And Russian food is not spicy. Uh, it's just, I don't know how else to explain it. It just, I think it's just more clear uh food uh, flavor like uh, if it's potatoes it's potatoes it's just flavor like potatoes the same like meat we just put salt and pepper and you just feel clean uh, clear of uh, flavor mm -mm, don't like it <laughs> don't like it don't, I just don't like it. Like I need lemon. I need hot sauce. I need a little bit of like I love onion and it's got a she bite. don't it's got a bite. she don't like onion for some reason. When I was small, I don't like uh, onion, uh, garlic. I start eat garlic now, but I still don't like onion like a lot. Here's a question. Uh, in the USA, you, I was not in the Army. I was in the Marine Corps and in, in Russia. So I, besides YouTube, guys, excuse me, I also taught English. So as a foreigner... Uh, you can have the opportunity, if you speak English, for instance, you can teach English. There's a lot of Russians out there who want to speak with native speakers. And I was given the opportunity to do like English lesson, just conversation. So this is another job that I had. I am not a pensioned uh, veteran living in Russia. This is absolutely fake because there's no way of getting money into Russia. Cash is what you bring. And I work not only in YouTube, but I also have a cafe here in Mexico. So yes, I was teaching in Russia as an English teacher. If you are used to the struggle, you got to find a way every way possible. Thanks for the input, Dan. I'm looking up to lineman salary in Russia. Entry, okay. Yeah, look, listen. If you have a plan to come to Russia to live, erase that plan, come to Russia as a tourist. The American visa... The, the Americans have the best visa, in my opinion. You could stay up to six months. I'm going to be making a video on how to get a Russian visa as an American, so stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Does anybody else have any other questions for my guest? Uh, let me see here. You guys can write your, 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 your questions on the chat. They will be highlighted, and they will be answered. I'm looking at the live stream uh guys hey if you guys can just hit like it does also not cost you anything it's absolutely free to support the channel it is almost on my on this live stream it's almost to uh 300 likes you know let's try to get to 300 it would really mean a lot uh why because more people get to watch it and more people get to get the information that they might need that they don't know that they need okay Uh, what, uh, what is this? Okay, here we go, down. Oh, this is a beautiful question, Eddie. Uh, getting married in Russia, you know, <laughs> I've made a video about it. Go over to my channel. It's called I Married a Russian Spy, and that's going to explain a lot of this backstory. That's just too long to explain, but for the most part, when I first came to Russia and I told my friends and family I was meeting a woman here, they were like, are you crazy? They're going to kidnap you. You know, they're, they're whatever. Uh, she's going to be a bearded man. You know, you're being catfished. But uh, as time went on, they realized that, hey, this is something really, really serious. 
And uh, if your family and your friends truly care and love you, they're going to support you. And that's all I've received is support. Yeah. I mean, if your family don't support your wedding, then you probably already have bad relationship with your family because come on now. And uh, for as far as my wedding, I'm thinking about uh, July or June, June, July, like Senya mentioned, because it will be better weather in, uh, in the part of Russia that we live in. And uh, I could probably do some fishing photo shoots. It's going to be awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, guys, uh, thank you so much. Let's see. We made it to 300 likes on the live. But also, we are also streaming on my friend's a channel who is the Moscow photographer. Let's try to get his uh, likes up as well. Uh, if you're not subscribed to him, he is, I'm going to put his channel again on the chat here. You can copy and paste it, or you can just click on the, on the link. It is linked and you can subscribe to his channel. He's almost to 4,000 subscribers. And it means a lot to me when you guys help my friends out, because I, I don't usually, uh, bring people on here who are not good people. Uh, there's a lot of content creators out there who are probably saying lies and exaggerating things for views, but I try my best to be as humble and honest as I can. And that's just the, that's just, this is the type of uh, guest that I want to bring on here. And this is my good friend, Eddie from Moscow. He recently got married Thank you so much. and man, it, it is so nice to have you on. Oh, you're on both streams. That's funny. Oh, that's really good. The the that's a really good support. Appreciate can it. You get Thank dual you. Dual citizenship. Let's see. The, I think you can, right? You can become. You can. A uh, currently in Russia, that's as of today. Laws may change. You do not have to renounce your original citizenship when you uh, acquire Russian citizenship. So you can stay an American and uh, be a Russian citizen as well, have two passports. Awesome. You know, and for me, uh, as a Mexican-American who holds both citizenships, Mexican and American, if it ever came down to getting a Russian citizenship, I, I think it would be an interesting thing because the, my American passport is blue, my Mexican passport is green, and I always <laughs> joke with my mama. I was like, hey, mama, I need that red one. I got to get that red one too. If you don't know, the Russian passport is red. Babe, where's your Russian passport? I don't know you told uh, can you give me my, get the bag and then get it. I think it's on the table over there. I just want to show you guys, um, what the passports look like. You know, it's, it's, it's like this guys. I think a lot of people are scared to visit Russia. A lot, even more people are scared to get the little bag. No, get the little bag. A lot of people are scared to get uh, to visit Russia. A lot of people are scared to even become Russian citizens. I think that the 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 thing that he said that is ingrained in me is like, okay, check it out. Do not live up. Um, in, 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 in my culture, a fear is a sickness and do, and to live off the sickness of others is a really ignorant thing. It's a ridiculous thing. So if you've ever thought about, uh, visiting Russia, uh, my American, my American one got sent to, to, to America. Actually, this is my Mexican uh, passport. It is green. Uh, here. Nice. And this is uh, Xenia's passport. It is red. And uh, the blue one would be here, my, my American passport. But it is right now I'm getting the Russian visa. But anyways, you can see how beautiful uh, both passports are. They both have eagles. And the American one has an eagle too. And, you know, that is something that these countries all have alike. Their emblems have birds on them. The American one would be somewhere here. And it would also have the bird on it. Really cool. Thank you. So here's another question. So other than bringing cash, is there no way to transfer money? No, unless you're some sort of crypto god. Yeah, and also I can tell you about crypto. The exchange rates are astronomical. So you lose a lot of money 
uh, transferring uh, using crypto. Yeah, and honestly, I don't trust it because I'm not a I'm not a crypto guy. I'm not that kind of person. But if 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 you needed it at an emergency, I would only yes. do it this way as a complete emergency where I'm willing to waste a uh, hundred or two hundred dollars losing it or maybe potentially losing it all. The crypto is a last case scenario. Again, none of you should be bringing in crypto or even thinking about other things. Just bring cash. You're going to be tourists. Do the tourist thing and bring cash. Only until recent time have people been asking, how can I move money into Russia? No, guys, being uh, a tourist means bring your cash and enjoy it. Um, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. Always, always bring cash when you're coming to Russia. You can even open up a bank account in Russia as a tourist and deposit your money and exchange it. Uh, Xenia, I'm going to put you back in here. Xenia is back. Xenia, can you tell us uh, when I, when I, when we got together and we moved in together, do you remember we had a bank card, right? Yes. What did we do to have money in that bank? Uh, we put dollars there and change it. Before we have uh, in Alpha Bank, uh, we have this machine uh, where you can take money. Uh, they have uh, things where you can put money in dollars and they put on your dollar account. And after this, you can change it in any time when you need. You just can hold it there and it's it. Yeah. And Stalin, again, giving us the information that we need. Do not bring drugs, guys. <laughs> Honestly, this is a funny meme uh, comment, but in Russia, the tolerance for drugs is zero, absolute. You know, and I, it's a, it's not a, oh, it was a little bit, oh, I need it for this. No, do not bring drugs into Russia. Do not be a, a, a drug addict in Russia. This is not the way to go. There's even stories about people going to jail just for the smallest amounts. Uh, yeah, here we go. Solovo, uh Set, oh my, I suck at saying his name. Sev, se, he already taught me how to say it. He's my good friend. He's also responsible for helping me make the uh, buying property in Russia. He is completely right. $10,000, don't have to declare it, but the, maybe the officials will say, hey, do you have this money? And if they ask, then say yes. Do not have to be uh, beating around the bush. When you come to Russia, be truthful. Let's see. Uh, one of our another one of our moderators says, "Hello, Jay. By the way, uh, for tourists who want to open up a bank account in Russia, if you are not planning on staying, banks will open an account for a duration of your migration registration on your passport. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely helpful information. If you're not going to stay indefinitely or for a long time, they have that option. Very cool. Didn't know that. Thank you, Jay." Uh, let's see, even if you bring drugs into the United States, yeah, but by, by the way, Kozar, the biggest difference between Russia and the United States is there is not millions and billions of, of, of drugs going into Russia like there are coming into the United States. Um, also, there are more people getting caught in trying to transport into Russia than in the United States, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Russia is the land of common sense. I've already made a video talking about what not to do in Russia. The same things apply in the United States, but you can get away with a lot more in the United States. Just going to put it that way. Medications are cheaper in Russia. Hey, Eddie, have you experienced this going to the Optica? I have experienced that, yes. So first of all, you don't need a prescription for many types of common drugs that you would get in the United States. You just don't need a cold medicines, any, you know, what is it, uh, decongestants and things like this. Do you have to show ID and that are back behind locked places and stuff like this? You don't need that. Um, but the prices are extremely, extremely low. Uh, even having to pay a copay in the United States is still cheaper here in Russia. Yeah. It's, I, I've been sick like maybe three times in Russia and Senya goes to the pharmacy and she grabs some potent stuff that gets me running. She's like, drink three of these and then drink two of these. And I'm just like hyped up on energy and I get uh, uh, get uh, fixed really fast. More so than in America. I remember I rarely took any medicine in America, but when I did, it didn't help me as much as the Russian one. I, I don't know what the hell they're doing in Russia, but they do it really good. 
They do it right. Yeah. Healthcare is cheaper for sure. My wife had to travel back to get her treatment for her sinus. Ooh, this is Canada. Uh, what about this? Did you ever have to do health insurance for Russia? I didn't. I never did it. Uh, I just simply buy medicine from the from the doc from the pharmacies. No, I I didn't have that because well I am insured back in uh, Texas or in the United States because uh, I'm retired and I do have that benefit. But of course that benefit won't help me here in Russia. But hopefully now with temporary residency I can apply for the state insurance. Yeah, hopefully it goes through. Um, do people in Siberia use herbal remedies for, I think Siberians, and I'm talking about like ethnic Siberians, like Buryat, uh, the, the people in Yakutsk, uh, these different people, they definitely have, uh, herbal remedies. They definitely have traditional stuff. I think the Siberian people, uh, do have the, the herbal stuff, but not only the Siberians, guys, the babushkas, the Russian people are very, babe, can you say maybe some remedies that your father says, oh, if you get sick, not medicine, like maybe from the grandma times, there has to be like old traditions to get ready, uh, fixed. Do you know any? Yeah, sometimes people use like grass, like boil it, or you can make like we made varenia. Mm -hmm. When you're sick, you can uh, drink a tea with it and it can help you. Uh, it's what I remember because uh, my grandmother, my grandparents, they die early and I don't remember so much things from this time. Uh, here's a question from a fellow veteran. Uh, what about getting v uh, VA medical, me medical like prescriptions in Russia? No, you cannot. But my, my suggestion for you would be bring as many as possible. And if you really need them. Make sure if you're going to visit Russia, visit a place where it's next to Kazakhstan, Turkey, uh, Mongolia, or another country, third country that you can send them there. And then from there, you can either pick them up or ship them to Russia. These countries still ship to Russia. Like I know Kazakhstan, you could still mail order, a ma a send mail. And so like if you really, really need your medical attention, bring it with you or be close to the border of another country because the best way to get it is by mail and uh, you're going to have to send it to a third party country. Oh, here's a super sticker. What is this? Thank you so much, my friend. But listen, Reno, if you guys have any donations, please do ask a question. Please do uh, maybe seek information. I appreciate the donations. Uh, also, my friend Eddie is here. And by the way, this stream is only happening because of him. Uh, I forgot to mention that, and I feel he, I, I'm sorry, Eddie, but this is definitely no, because no. of him. This platform that we're using, uh, if you notice, this is a new setup brought to you by him. I wanted to have him on, but I am absolutely incompetent, and we're streaming right now on StreamYard through his uh, through his program here, and uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much, Eddie, again. Happy to help, man. Happy to help, yeah. brother. No, it means a lot to me. Again, for all of you guys who are watching, Eddie is having his own channel. Go check out his channel, The Moscow Photographer. Let's check his uh, subscriber count because it's really important for me as well. 9.5. almost. We need 50 more people. If you're watching, it's free. We're trying to get him to 4,000. He has a premiering video soon, so you can see what kind of videos he's producing. Uh, and how much time is it, Eddie? Wow. What's that? What is it? Actually, so no, no, no. My premiere already went live, but we are so invested in this live. We've got a lot of good, uh, many yeah. people watching. We've got a lot of good questions. So it's uh, better to be here and to answer these questions and to help people out. Listen, thank you so much for the time. But guys, subscribe to his channel. Premiere means that he just had a video that was released, okay? On YouTube, you can... Uh, premiere a video live and you can interact with the with the person um but like i said you, you you can get all the information that you need live on this video and go back to his channel later all right let's go back to the questions um there are some a few people who asked some questions that i missed they will be highlighted like you guys have seen in the past um let's see moscow freedom let's see what is this freedom in a building a homestead, convenient regulations. 
what? I don't understand. This is America is regulated to death on a person's property. Okay, so in if you're asking about property and how Russia manages it, I think property tax. Do you know what property tax is when you own a house uh, and yeah. land? Yeah, I know what this exists, but I don't know how much is it now. Okay, it's lower than America for sure. Uh, I will be making a video on it. Um, what is your living situation like, Eddie? Would you live in an apartment? Uh, can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, we, we live in, a, in an apartment. And um, in Moscow, this is the way to do it because there's just no land. You know, we're actually inside the city of Moscow, not in Moscow region. So if you want to have a private home, a private house, then you have to build this uh, in Moscow region. So this is outside the city or in a smaller town, a smaller village, dacha villages. This is where it's going. It just keeps the further out you get from a, from a big city, the cheaper it's going to be. But yes. you lose a lot of conveniences. So you may not have the best paved roads. You may not have uh, access to uh, a grocery store or a supermarket or whatever nearby you will need to have a car. So living in an apartment in Moscow, we don't have to own a car because we can get anywhere we need to in the metro using the bus system or uh, car sharing. There's just, transportation is not a problem in Moscow. Oh man, like when Xenia and I visited, I couldn't believe that there was actually self-driving cars. I know maybe they've been there a long time. I never knew, she knew, I was mind blown. Senya, can you tell us the difference between living in a town like ours in Moscow from the difference that you saw? Yeah, it's the same like a metro. Uh, like in Irkutsk, I can wait the bus maybe 30 minutes, maybe one hour after work. But if you have metro, it's like uh, two minutes and that's it. You go. It doesn't matter if you, it's full or not. You will go. So and bad. you even can go, don't go out. You just go on different lines the same way and go in different direction it's easy faster it's really good what do you think that besides transportation though like he said you know convenience what what's other things that was very good to in in moscow compared to our town like you know what convenient means something that makes you comfortable something that you um, makes life easier what are some things that you saw in moscow that we don't have in sudanka I don't know, in Sri Lanka we have like uh, the same uh, stores, uh, uh, what you can make your life easier, but no. uh, Moscow have different things like uh, for have fun, like uh, this uh, dream island. Yes. Uh, you can go there with kids. It's uh, more for museums, uh, yeah. more place for culture. For enjoyment for and enjoyment, leisure. Yeah. yeah, babe, but like in the stores, let me tell you right now, in Moscow, the amount of stuff in the stores is insane. The stores are massive, like malls. I had not seen a shopping mall in two years. And then I went to Moscow. Babe, you forgot to talk about malls and like- uh... Yeah, but in Irkutsk we have uh, malls too. Yeah, but they Maybe look- A little smaller, but- A little smaller? Oh, come on, you're exaggerating. The one in Moscow was the whole block. Yeah, in Moscow they're huge. But in Irkutsk we have mall, it's a uh, cinema there. It's food. It's uh, all stuff what you need. Maybe she sees it as a Russian and maybe she's a little bit more humble. But for me, guys, like Eddie living in Moscow, uh, like when I go back to Moscow I, and when I visit him and when I saw him and we went to a restaurant and we were able to go to a Mexican restaurant, uh, like it's very abundant. Moscow has the culture of a thousand countries even though there's not a thousand countries but like a thousand ethnicities moscow is like this it feels like the center of the universe so definitely when he's saying all these are com co commodities it, there's no there is no limit from what i noticed in moscow it just as much as if you can imagine it it exists in moscow well in a small town and i like it this way uh it's so so like you you're so insignificant in a good way Nobody, nobody uh, gonna bother you. You know, like you're not gonna have city folk uh, coming in, and, and nothing against city people, but like we know who lives in Sri Lanka, and if you're from there, you know the routine. 
Uh, so like that is the beautiful thing about Russia. You can live in Moscow, you can live in a small town, you can live in a small village. And I think that kind of is disappearing in a lot of countries because small towns are disappearing. And um, I don't know, I just feel that way. I love small towns. Hello, everybody. Uh, Pablo Ramirez tuning in. Guys, can you leave in the comment section? Spam it again. Where are you watching us from? Tell us what country and city you're watching from. Uh, let's see if we can have all, uh, all of the continents except Antarctica. Let us know where you're watching from. Last time we did this, we had all six continents. Let's see. Uh, I want to know what city and what country your guys are from. Oh, really? It was 10% 10 minutes ago. Oh, no, 10%. <laughs> oh, you can say goodbye, baby, if you want now. India, that's Asia. All right, we got a, our first comment. Oh, sorry. Ah. India, this is Asia. Moscow, that is considered Europe. Scotland is Europe. Minnesota, this is North America. Toronto is North America. Do we have anybody in uh, in Australia or New Zealand? Uh, hello, Anderson, Missouri. I always think it's funny when, when towns are named like names. Uh, London, this is Europe. Hello, Jay. Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, look, there's somebody from your state, Eddie. Texas, DFW. <laughs> Texas in the house. Toronto again. Manchester, United Kingdom. East Another. Texas there. Oh, wow. You know what? We're going to have uh, Timothy Honorary uh, from New Zealand. He is from New Zealand, but uh, we're missing South America as well. Is anybody watching from Africa, South America, or... Uh, New, or New Zealand or, or Australia. Oh, here's in France. That's a new one. I've never seen anybody from France. Ufa, Russia. Ufa. Is the last with the Arthur. Privet. All right. Looks like uh, the chat's pretty much everywhere. That's good. Guys. Um, Xenia has to log off of here because her phone's going to die, but probably can go out like this. Is there anything you want to say to the chat? Uh, thank you so much for talking so much today. You don't really talk so much. Yeah, but I'm a very shy person, what I could say. <laughs> but anyways, thank, thanks everyone who watching us. And I hope we'll see you again. Yeah, well, we're not. I'm not getting off the chat, but babe, anything you want to say, our friend Eddie, who we met in Moscow. Oh, I want to say thank you so much for to you be with us, and thank you so much for made so beautiful photo in Moscow for us. Yeah, it was mm, amazing. Thank you, my pleasure, my pleasure, and I look forward yeah, to seeing was, both of you soon. It was an amazing night, and I still remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Bye to you. Yeah, and you need to uh, turn off this. I don't know how. No, you could just oh. get off of it. You give me in my headphone. All right. That was Senia, by the way. Senia and I are going to be getting married later this year. And the biggest reason why this live is happening right now, like I said, is because my friend Eddie has the information on how to get married in Russia. We went over the paperwork that you need. We went over the customs and how it goes down like the ceremony. We also talked about residency in Russia because after you get married, you can apply for that. Um, guys, hit like on both chats. I, I really am uh, very grateful for your guys' support. Um, I, I showed you my telegram and my email. Is there any way if people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you, Eddie? So I do have telegram as well. And um, I am at... Moscow photographer on Telegram. And I'm also on VK. I'm <laughs> not there yet. So I'm also on VK as well. So you can you can find me there. And if you go to my channel and then go to my uh, About Me page, there is a uh, email. So if you want to email me directly, you know, don't spam me with crap, okay? You know, be cool. But uh, if, if there's something you want to share or if you've got some ideas for a show or 
you, you just want more direct contact, look for it there as well. Yeah. And, you know, the thing that I tell people all the time is that we're a small community and we're a helpful community. The people that I bring on are people who are willing to have uh, a conversation with you. I don't think that I've, I've uh, produced, we haven't been live with anybody who has been too full of themselves to not answer a question. In the end, like in the, in reality, guys, um, life is too short to hold information, right? Like I would never hold a secret uh, from you guys. If I find out something, I want to push it out. That's why I'm just one man. Eddie has his own channel, subscribes to his channel. He has different point of views. He has different lessons that he can teach you. Um, this is beautiful thing. In the future, if you guys are willing, who are watching right now, because of Eddie's uh, application here, the StreamYard, we can bring on live guests from outside. Eddie, I think it would be really cool to kind of bring on a panel that is not here to give information, but who is here to ask questions live. If you oh, guys absolutely. Would be, like a yeah. like a sort of like a town, like a town hall. Town hall live with subscribers. I think this would bring the community closer to us. Um, if you guys would be willing to do that, you would need a camera and a microphone. I'm going to plan for maybe after my Cancun trip. So maybe in two weeks, planning with my friend Eddie here, we can do this. Um, That'd be fun. Yeah, I think it would be awesome. Sabina, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Um, this stream has been going on for two hours and 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to give the floor for Eddie for your farewell, for your goodbye. You can uh, promote yourself on anything that you got, please. Well, Dan, thank you so much for this opportunity to come together to, to meet with your audience. And then through serendipity, we just found out we could share on both channels. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. And uh, so I really appreciate that. And guys, Go over to my channel. A lot of the questions that we've seen on this uh, live chat, I've already answered in some of my videos. Dan's answered some of those questions on his videos as well. So go over there and search. There's information. I, in fact, I've got a playlist on how to visit Russia and about life there. So just go there. All that information is there. And if it's not, leave a comment because I read every comment. So if you got something con uh, constructive to say, you've got an idea for us, put it down there, okay? We really appreciate it. Appreciate your support because without your support, we're nothing. Absolutely. So please like, share, and subscribe. The, one of the most important things you can do, it doesn't cost you anything, is subscribe. But the second thing you could do is share this. Share this on your social media. Share this with it in an email with your friends. You've got a lot of people that you know who know nothing about Russia, or maybe have some ideas that just aren't true, share this with them so that we can share the reality of what Russia is. Russia is not your enemy. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Love you, man. Thanks for Love everything. you so much. Hey, I'll be seeing you soon, brother. I'll see you Take soon. Care, brother. You All got right. it. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, guys. That was my friend, Eddie, you know, and I'm going to stay on here for a couple more minutes. Uh, you know, like I said, mentioned earlier, I have my Russian flag here. Um, the reality of my situation, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have been asking me more questions. You know, when am I going back to Russia? Uh, where is Xenia? Do I gonna, all these random stuff. I'm going to answer. I'm going to stay on here for about 20 minutes more answering your personal questions like this. Uh, make a video about how I met her. I already made a video of how I met Xenia. Um, I could probably put that up for you guys to see it. I could uh, promote it. Uh, if you don't have bell notifications on, put them on so you can keep up with the channel. Is Dan Hispanic? I, I am Mexican American. I don't like to call myself Hispanic, but I'm a Mexican American. I can speak English, Spanish, and a little bit of German. That's probably why sometimes I'll be like, that's just or, uh, yeah, I would be saying random German words. But anyways, I speak English, Spanish, a little bit of German. That's why my accent is very strange. Uh, let's see. When do you think direct flights will open from Mexico to Russia? There is direct flights from Moscow to, to, to La Havana. 
direct flights, and then you can connect to Mexico. Guys, now is the best time to visit directly from the American continent from Mexico because you can fly to Cuba and fly directly to Moscow. That is the way I'm going to be taking. And that is my friend, the Moscow photographer. If you do not have him already subscribed to your list, go over there and subscribe. Don't you want to... Uh, Look, I try to fix my back problems. I went to get uh, an MRI, basically, and I have two uh, herniated discs. I have two discs that are bad. Bueno, eh, el español que uso no es, no es de España, obvia, obviamente. Yo hablo el español mexicano. Y la verdad es que yo soy muy orgulloso de ser mexicano. ¿Y qué quieres que te diga? Aquí ya tengo como cinco meses viviendo en México, trabajando acá con la raza, aprendiendo otra vez el dialecto mexicano, porque el, el dialecto y las palabras que se usan en México son muy distintas a las que se, se usan en España. No somos nada iguales, más que, bueno, eh, ni se escuchan igual. Pero un saludo muy grande a todos los que hablan español, ¿vale? How is your Russian? My Russian is abysmal. It is very bad. I haven't had any chance to learn it. I said I was going to learn it. I can read Russian. I can understand Russian, but I cannot speak it so well. Dan, can you please tell me what you've observed crime rates in Russia compared to the United States and Mexico? Here, well, there in Russia, I never saw a crime. In Mexico and in the United States, you'll see the occasional in real life burglary or assault and fighting or, or just Grand Theft Auto, you, you will see a lot of that on the streets compared to Russia. In Russia, depending on where you are, like in Moscow, I never saw any crime. In my hometown, in Sludanka, I never saw any crime. Uh, let's see. Guys, again, if you have any questions, I'm going to be on here for about 20 more minutes, just answering any questions that you may have. Perhaps you can make a video on the visa process. Yeah, the new video coming up in two weeks is going to be how to get a visa if you're an American. I only I only know how to do it as an American, guys. I don't know how to do it as another foreign, like a, another uh, nationality. I will be making the best video for you to learn how to get a Russian visa. What does this mean when you say Russian expert level? <laughs> All right. I'm going to explain this and then I'm going to leave you guys. When I say that to, to be in Russia is to play on expert level means like imagine you're playing a video game. Okay. Imagine you're playing uh, let's, what, Atari. Everybody knows the old game Atari, right? Imagine you're playing against the computer. America is on easy mode. Europe is on easy mode. The ball is going to come beep, and go very slowly on Russian server. You must play on expert level. Bing, 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 bing. Why? Because Russia is not for the weak. Russia is not for the for the for the easy server players. No, Russia is for expert players of anything. This is what I mean. It's basically like playing uh, like hardcore mode, like Florida and Texas. That's the best way I can describe it. No offense to the Floridians or Texas, but like you guys are on another level. As a tourist, can you rent a car in Russia? You can definitely rent a, a car in Russia as a tourist. Can you make a working vacation? Like, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're working electronically, you can definitely work in Russia. If you're working on your computer, 100%. I was working teaching English online. That was how I was making money in Russia. You can definitely do it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what part of Texas Eddie is from. Golly, he could probably do it. But if you want to come to Russia, like the like our moderator said, you can work on uh you cannot work on a tourist visa, but they do have business visas. But if you're working online, I don't think there's a problem with that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can work online. This is not uh like a digital nomad. I think you could still do it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no reason why Russia would try to regulate you working from your computer. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, this is another interesting 
thing that happened in the past um, that Russia brought its troops for the for the Mexican Independence Day. The Russian troops marched on the Socalo in our capital. That was beautiful. Um, let's see, guys. Thank you so much for supporting. Please hit like. You know, it doesn't cost anything. Share my videos with your friends. I pre I posted two recent videos. Go to my channel, check them out, and send them to your friends. All right. I will be going back to the old ways of creating content on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday once I'm back in Russia. If you have any other comments, comment in the chan in the video comment section. Thank you so much for joining me and goodbye, my friends. I love you guys. Thank you for the support.